Just gonna wait for. Just gonna wait. Make sure my stream's live. Okay, I think I think we're live here. All right, so so yeah, I uh, I don't know, I I I try to mix it up, you know, with my content, not stream the same deck all the time, but I just I don't know, I I feel like Goat Control needs some some extra eyes lately. So uh so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stream some some goat control. Uh I last streamed this deck, I don't know, a little over a month ago, maybe like five weeks ago. And I liked it for the most part, so so I wanted to play it again. Uh I didn't didn't play too many matches, but but we played a few. Uh so yeah, so there are a few changes from the last time I streamed. So I'll talk about those changes briefly and also, just sort of, I don't know, go over the general idea of the deck for those who weren't here last time. Uh, so the one thing that I didn't like in the main deck from the last time was Morphing Jar. So you'll see there's no Morphing Jar in the main deck. Instead, the Morphing Jar is a Dekochi. Um, and I don't know, it's like Morphing Jar is the, it's the kind of card that you want to be good. It's the kind of card that feels like it should belong in Goat Control. And yet, um, it, I don't know, I just don't like its place in the meta. Like, that's that's really what it comes down to. I mean, Morphing Jar is, like, terrible against all the Warrior decks, which are pretty popular. Uh, against, like, the Chaos decks, it's like, it depends. Like, it depends on their list, it depends on the player. So, like, against Chaos, it's, like, kind of situational at best. And I also kind of felt like this deck needed another dark, because, like, two Tsukiyomi, one Sangin, one Breaker for, like, four darks, you know, not counting Metamorphosis. To me, that seemed a little light on the darks. No pun intended, I guess. Uh, so, yeah. So, so we just cut the morphing for the Dekochi. Um, Dekochi, I think it's it's fine. Um, you know, it gives us one thing to sort of flip up and down with Tsukiyomi, because we are playing two Tsukiyomis, and, like, Morphing Jar isn't really a good, like, Tsukiyomi target. I mean, it can be sometimes, but, like, it's not... That's not really what it's there for. So, yeah, so it makes our Tsukiyomi a little better. Um, again, you know, Morphing Jar is the kind of card you want to play, because, like, it's good with the two Dust Tornadoes, it's good with Solemn. Uh, we're also only playing, like, one Tribute Monster, which makes Morphing Jar a little worse. So, yeah, so we cut that. I liked all the other things. I I liked the one Sakura, the one Solemn. Um... I think something that a lot of people, like, get wrong about Solemn, um, and I don't know, I might even make a video on this or make this as part of another video, but it, it like, obviously in decks like Warriors or Flip Control, you want to play three Solemn, because it's, like, a key part of your strategy, like, you're trying to go, like, set, you know, a bunch of back rows of Solemn, but in a deck like this, that's, like, not what you're trying to do at all. So, like, you actually want to play fewer copies of Solemn so that you're more likely to draw it later in the game when, like, the life points aren't a big deal. Like, you don't want to open Solemn Judgment in this deck. Like, this is not a card you want to see in your opening hand. Um, but I do like its place in the meta, and I think it's a pretty good card, like, if you understand how to use it. Um, so, yeah, and then, like, obviously the other thing that's, like, kind of unique about this deck of playing, like, the four warriors with the reinforcement of the army... Um, and I'll, I'll talk about this a little as the stream goes on, but, um, I think that one of the strengths of Goat Control is that, like, in a way, it's kind of like a toolbox deck, like, even, like, forgetting the reinforcement of the army, like, even a normal Goat Control, you know, um, Call of the Haunted and Premature are, like, kind of toolboxy cards, Magician of Faith is, like, kind of a toolboxy card. So I feel like what this deck is trying to do often is sort of have, like, the like the best option for any given situation. Uh, like, this is definitely not a deck where, like, you're just gonna inherently overpower other decks like Chaos. So, like, rather than, like, having the best, like, quality of options, you're really trying to have, like, the best quantity of options. In the sense that, like, yeah, maybe Mystic Swordsman level 2, like, isn't a super insane card that you always want to have. 
but you know if we want to beat you know again if we want to beat a deck like chaos we kind of need a card like this um hopefully that makes sense and oh, uh, oh yeah another thing that i like too is like against warriors i think zombra the dark is a really good side deck card and then once you side that in like you reinforce me or we can get a light in the dark which is which is kind of cool because you're gonna leave in like blade knight against them uh yeah i also wanted to mention i mean in general i think like one of the strengths of goat control is also is also the side deck just, just the side deck in general just the the number of directions that you can take the side deck and the there are a lot more side decking strategies that are available to you than most other decks um and it's interesting because i feel like with the more linear decks in the format, like, they don't really need their entire side deck. Like, for most decks in GOAT format, like, a 10-card side deck would be sufficient. But with, like, GOAT control, you actually do get, like, full value out of, like, all the cards in your side deck. So, I, you know, the side deck changed a little from last time. Um, the Morphing Jar got put in the side since it's not in the main. Uh, I also have two Sakuretsus in the side. I know I didn't have that before. I think before I just had one. Um, just because, like, the way that warrior decks are built right now, I think, like, it's interesting, because I think this deck is, it does, like, pretty poorly against Warriors game one, but I think, like, games two and three, like, they have to draw really well for, for them to beat you, because, um, like, you have, you know, three goats, three meta, and a swap, and then you have, like, double sock, you know, triple Saku to take care of the Azura Priests, which are, like, the only way that they can do anything about your scapegoat um because like warrior decks don't really play like king tiger wangu anymore which used to be like their main game plan for goat control so it, it's interesting because like it used to be like three years ago people were like oh yeah like warriors is like one of the hardest matchups for goat control now i think it's like kind of the opposite i think like goat control is one of like the hardest matchups for warriors especially post side i mean you can definitely build this deck differently to be more anti-warrior like, you could have Spy in the main or the side. Um, the problem is, it's like, yeah, I like Spy against Warriors, but, like, I just don't like it against anything else, so that kind of, like, excludes it from the main. And then, I don't know, I feel like we just don't, like, have... I feel like we don't have room in the side for Spy, and I feel like the other stuff is sufficient. Like, the only monster that I really want to take out from our main deck against Warriors is Mystic Swordsman level 2. And then it's like I want to put in another warrior in its place, so like our reinforcement the army is still good. So it's like, oh, Zimbray of the Dark. Boom, we're done. Um, so yeah, everything else is like pretty standard, I think. I mean, I think it's also worth talking about Air Knight, because I think like Air Knight, it's weird. Like, I feel like Air Knight gets sided out a lot in pretty, pretty much like against more than 50% of the meta, Air Knight definitely gets sided out. So that, like, kind of begs the question of, well, why main it, then, if you're always siding it out? The problem is, is, like, there's not, like, a tribute monster that is, like, universally good against the entire meta. Like, the closest thing would be Zaborg. So you could make the case for just saying, oh, well, you should just play Zaborg over Air Knight in the main deck. And, like, that is an option. You can do that. Like, there are pros and cons. Um... It's interesting, because, like, Zaborg, I don't really like Zaborg against Warriors. Like, against Warriors, we side in the Mobius over the Air Knight. But obviously, Air Knight isn't really good against Warriors either. Um, I will say the one matchup, though, where I think Air Knight is definitely better than Zaborg and Mobius are, like, the, uh, like, the Mimic Chaos decks, which people still play. Basically, any sort of Thunder Dragon Chaos deck with meta in it, Air Knight's pretty good at pretty solid against that like better than better than Zaborg by a little um and like same thing with angel chaos air knight's definitely better but no one really plays angel chaos anymore i think um and like against reasoning gate air knight's definitely like the best tribute because they play through scapegoat so yeah i think there's some debate about that choice but but yeah i it, in the past i you know, the last time I streamed, I was like, yeah, Air Knight's not great, but it's it's good enough. Um, so yeah, so one of the reasons that I wanted to stream Goat Control this week, even though I streamed it, whatever it was, like five weeks ago or whatever, is because, in my opinion, 
in in my opinion, Goat Control is like the most misunderstood deck right now. And I'm gonna elaborate on that throughout the entire stream. I'm trying to like do a thing where I uh talk about I don't know, sort of have like a a theme to talk about for the stream. So so yeah, I'm gonna go over some of like history behind Goat Control. Oh, this is really good going second hand. Um well against most decks. Yeah. Like we're definitely off to a good start here. We definitely want to see that Thunder Dragon. Um, so yeah, where was I going with this? So yeah, what's interesting, what's fascinating to me, is that, um, you know, if we look at sort of the attitude of, of GOAT format players a few years ago, it was, um... It was basically this idea of, yeah, you know, goat control is, like, far and away the, you know, best choice, and, you know, yeah, some other decks can get lucky and, and win sometimes, but goat control is sort of the, the best, like, deck all around. And that was, like, th about three years ago. And then today, um... Today's sort of the attitude is, yeah, I'm just going to snatch steal this Kaiku and, and go for a hit here. Um, today the attitude is like the opposite. Like I saw, you know, on like the, I don't know, whatever it is, the Obelisk, Raw Tournaments, whatever, they're like, oh yeah, there were like 44 decks played and like one of them was goat control and it's like logically you would think like how is that possible like how is it in three years that sort of the mainstream attitude is oh yeah goat control is clearly the best deck and only a bad player would like ever play something else how do we go from that to oh yeah goat control sucks like why would anyone play that because, like, the card pool hasn't changed, right? It's kind of like, I think of it sort of analogous to the stock market, where, like, if there's some stock that, um, you know, goes up, um, I don't know, you know, goes up, like, a thousand percent, right? Without anything fundamentally changing. Well, there's really only one, there's really only one of two possibilities. Either the stock was insanely undervalued before, or it's insanely overvalued now, right? Though, like, one of the two has to be true. Or they could both be true. It could even be that it was undervalued before, and now after it went up a thousand percent, you know, oh yeah, now it's, now it's overvalued. Right? Um... Yeah, yeah. GameStop's actually a good example where, like, both of those, like, could very well be true, right? Um. So it's, like, kind of the same thing here, right? Like, we go from goat, goat control being, like, 80% of the meta to goat control being, like, 5% of the meta. Or less, maybe even, like, 2% of the meta. Um. And he did discard Sinister before, right? So we know that he has that. This is actually, like, a pretty shitty hand now because we drew, like, three warriors against, like, our opponent's Sinister. Now he's attacking with Gravekeeper Spy. This is, like, really bizarre. So, yeah. So, it's, like, again, it's kind of, like, analogous to the stock market, where it's, like, okay, either Goat Control was, like, super overplayed three years ago, and everyone had no idea what the hell they were talking about, or it's super underplayed now, and no one has any idea what the hell they're talking about, right? One of those two things has to be true. Um, and I, I think probably most people would say, oh, well, I guess people got it wrong before, right? Um, and, I mean, that's, that's, that's possible. That, that's possible that, you know, maybe everyone was just really stupid three years ago, but now, now they've got it all figured out, right? 
I don't I don't buy that. I think, you know, like GameStop, I think people were stupid before, and I think they're stupid now. So, you know, I, I want to sort of talk about, like, you know, why... Sort of, like, try to get closer to the truth here, right? Try to get closer to the truth. Truth is out there, just like just like X Files. Oh, this is a really good graceful because our hand is like dog shit. Well, we I don't know. We actually might want this Rota because I kind of want to get DD Warrior Lady. Like going DD Warrior Lady. Attack. Spy. Duo is also interesting here. Because, like, if we duo our opponent and he doesn't discard Sinister, then we just know that his set monster is Sinister. And two Thunder Dragons are gone. Yeah, this is actually really interesting. Like, we're probably going to get rid of Mystic Swordsman level 2. And do we need another scapegoat? Uh, well, he probably has Book of Moon set. We gotta think about that too. So he's gonna book his spy if we attack it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a risk here. Discard this second scapegoat. So yeah, this duo could definitely give us some pretty valuable info. Oh wow, that's a really good hit. Okay, so the set monster is not sinister. Oh, I actually kind of did this in the wrong order, but oh well. Yeah, I don't have to worry about this face down monster very much. Yeah, I, I definitely should have reinforced the army before I did the meta. Oh, that's a really good torrential. Yeah, this is gonna be kind of tough. But anyways, to get back to my point here, it's like, how 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 did this happen? You know, how how did this happen? And I I think to really like figure out how this happened, we kind of need to like go back, right? We kind of like go back all the way to two thousand five. Um. And think about, like, how did, like, Goat Control, like, really get created in the first place, right? Because even with the re revival of Goat Format, yeah, obviously that was, like, 10 years later or whatever, but it basically picked up where 2005 left off, right? It's kind of like, you know, we we took a break, so to speak. Uh... This is going to be a very hard game to win. Like, our opponent probably has Chaos Sorcerer, but there's just not a lot we can do about it. And here, I don't really think we can afford to play around heavy either. Our hand got, like, very awkward very quickly. Yeah, he just, like, he has heavy, he has torrential. Uh, I mean, Warriors were popular in 2005, but they were really bad. Yeah, he has, like, the heavy and the sorcerer. We just lost this game. Unless we just draw extremely well. We don't even have a light... Oh, no, we do have a light and a dark in our grave. So we can, like, draw BLS and hope to win that way. So, so what, like, you guys have to realize is that... Um, throughout, like, Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history, uh, prior... You know, prior to GOAT format... 
I think our opponent's getting too greedy. I mean, we're just drawing shit, so it doesn't matter. But, like, he's getting way too greedy here. Unless he has, like, ring. Even if he does have ring, this doesn't make sense. Yeah, our opponent's just getting, like, way too greedy. Uh, actually... Uh, set monster's probably Night Assailant. Yeah, set monster's Night Assailant. We're gonna lose, so I just want to attack his face down monster to get more info. Hopefully it's like Morphing Jar somehow. I mean, it's probably not, but... Oh, he just set Sinister. Okay, that's fine. So, so yeah, um... You know, how did, how did we get to this point, right? So, prior to 2005, like, there weren't decks. I know it's gonna sound weird, like, what do you mean there weren't decks? Um, there were some decks, but mostly what people played was just a collection of good cards. Right? Oh man, if we come back somehow, we're just a fucking sicko. Yeah, again, I want info here, so I'm going to cross out this. He says, I have a weird deck, and he's playing, like, Double Merchant in his Thunder Dragon Chaos. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to concede. Yeah, so people, yeah, every, basically indoors covered it here. What people played were good stuff decks, right? Like, the most... So, really, I don't know. It's it's kind of hard to say, like, how the thinking evolved. But, like, even from, like, day one, right, when it was, like, Yugi and Kaiba starter decks, it was just, oh, I'm playing La Jin because it has the most attack. I'm playing Fisher because it kills La Jin. And that, like, mentality lasted for, like, a long time. I mean, I don't really know, like, when the shift started to happen. I, I would say probably, like, 2007 is when like the shift started to happen but yeah i mean um what's our opponent even playing he says oh weird deck like his deck isn't weird like motherfucker weird deck you're the one with a weird deck so yeah let me figure out this guy's weird deck here for a sec We didn't we did see Spy. Yeah, I don't think he's playing metas. I think he's just playing, like, two Merchant and a Thunder Dragon Chaos deck for some strange reason. His hand's fine. Yeah, that's that's the ironic part. I started out by saying, oh, no one plays goat control anymore. <laughs> it's a weird deck, man. It's probably because he saw, like, Rhoda, so he's like, he saw Rhoda and Scapegoat in the same deck, so he's like, what the hell is this guy playing? But obviously I'm just playing goat control with a Rhoda in it. Um, so yeah, so... Anyways, to get back on topic here, the point is, is, like, people didn't really play, like, decks. They played collections of good cards. And, um, even, like, right up, you know, even, like, the format before, GOAT format, it was, like, you know, people played, it was called Cookie Cutter Chaos, right? Which is basically just, you know, I'm just playing all the best cards. Because that was just, I mean, it made sense then. I'm not, like, saying it's bad. Um... Yeah, that's such a good opening. Graceful for a plus one into knock into set monster while we have a dead faith. Oh, this is brutal. Oh, luckily we just top decked our own cross out. So we just get to luck out of it. Uh, I think we sided out to Kochi.
So yeah, so that was kind of like what Goat Control like started out as. Um, was just like, and if you look at like some of the deck lists from two thousand five, especially like in really early Goat format, you'd see things like two scapegoat, like one meta, one DD assailant with like lightning vortex. And sort of like all this other, you know, weird nonsense. Because, like, that was just sort of, like, how people were playing back then. It was just, like, even, like, Scapegoat... Scapegoat, I think, was played a little before um, Goat Format. Because, like, people had the view of, like, oh, it's it's kind of like a Wabaku that, like, combos with, like, I don't know, like, Creature Swap and United We Stand. Because, like, United We Stand was, like, another card that people played. Um. So, so yeah. Go, Go Control really just originated as a good stuff deck, right? I mean, even if you look at, like, Max Suffrage's list, he's like, oh, I played Morphing Jar because I thought it was a good card. I played Gravekeeper Spy because I thought it was a good card. And, like, that's just kind of where the logic began and ended. Um, so, I think, you know, again, in, like, whatever it was, you know, 2012-ish, people just kind of picked up where, like, GOAT format left off and was just sort of like, oh, yeah, I'm playing, like, GOAT control because it's got, like, all the best cards. But, like... You know, people obviously realized, you know, applying some more modern theory that, uh, you know, it's it's not that simple. I'm going to, like, Heavy Storm for, like, a plus two and still lose this game. Yeah, I'm going to Heavy Storm for 4,000 and still lose this game. People definitely knew about Reasoning Gate. But obviously it wasn't like as finely tuned as it is now. Um So yeah, and like, you know, there is sort of again when people were like, you know, started picking up, you know, where where GOAT format left off. Um Man, our hand is so bad. Like, we're just not supposed to be losing here, and yet here we are. So yeah, so basically, like, when people sort of picked up where GOAT format left off, they said, oh yeah, GOAT control, got all the best cards. Um, ah, we probably just want to scapegoat here, actually. I mean, I'm not thrilled about it, but it's probably what we want to be doing. Oh my god, like, we're just drawing, like, every card that we have absolutely no interest in seeing. I'm gonna set this, especially because, like, keeping two cards in hand while we have dust set is pretty good play, because if he duos us, we get to dust a card and then set one from our hand to, like, get him on duo. But yeah, we, we just gotta be patient here. We can draw out of this. Oh my god, are you fucking kidding me? At least the ring resolves. If he had book, I would have been kind of upset. So yeah, so people just had this idea that, oh yeah, you know, um... Goat Control has all the best cards, and they just sort of trust people from 2005. They had it all figured out. Well, if there's something better than Goat Control, people would have played it. And, you know, oh my god, our hand is so bad. Let's see, he's probably going to flip. Yeah, I think we have to, like, go for a really shitty play. Okay, that's fine. Getting rid of MST is pretty nice here, actually.
I don't know, it's possible they should have just waited here for a while and just tried to sit tight. The problem is, like, if his set monster is Night Assailant, he basically we should get to clear our goats next turn, which is not something. That's actually f fine. I'm actually glad he ringed. Well, I don't know. I mean, we have call, so it's fine. Um. Yeah, I don't know. This is still not a great spot for us. So yeah, he's got like Sukiomi in hand. I don't know. I mean, just Sukiomi doesn't do anything for now. So I mean, we're definitely not ahead, but. We could be. So yeah, it's like three years ago I was talking with people and I'd be like, why are you playing goat control? Right? And they couldn't really give me a real answer. Right? Not like any kind of like tangible relevant answer. They'd say something like, oh, I'm good at goat mirrors. Which, first of all, half the time they were lying. But even if for the sake of the argument they weren't, um... You know, a deck can't be good because, like, it beats the mirror, right? Um, and, you know, I think, you know, I think for a while, like, Goat Control, like, was legitimately good. Uh, so, again, like, three years ago, like, sort of the standard detox list of Goat Control, it was, like, largely built when the meta was, like, Goat Control and Chaos Recruiter. Which I know sounds like a really strange meta, but that was like what the meta was then. And like a lot of the choices were like for that meta, right? Um, I guess we'll just get. I don't even know. I mean, our options are basically like Exiled or Mystic Level 2. I guess we'll get Mystic Level 2. That way it forces him to summon Tsukiyomi and kill our guy. I don't know, I mean, it doesn't force him to do anything, but... Yeah, I mean, we could still win this, especially since he's at 23 to our 41. Yeah, his, he has four cards in hand, which are two Thunder Dragons and a Tsukiyomi. So, like, we can definitely beat that. So yeah, so anyways, I was gonna say, like, you basically, you know, people took, uh, you know, Chris Perovic's Xarian list, because, you know, for a while people falsely believed in the god of Xarian Universe, and they cut the Xarians for, like, DD Warrior Lady and Azura. And both those cards were pretty good against Chaos Recruiter in the Mirror, so, like, that kind of made sense. Uh, man, I didn't want to draw Mirror. I really wanted to draw, like, just any relevant monster. Or Potty Greed. Ah, oh, thanks for following. Yeah, it'll be pretty interesting if we manage to win this game. I still don't think we're favored, but... We got a light and a dark in our grave. Is our, our opponents use one cross set, so we can consider setting Sinister if we feel like we have to. He probably has an out to this, but... Yeah, what am I gonna do? Not even try? Oh! He set Tsukiyomi, and he had no out to Mystic Swordsman level 2? How is that even a thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna set Sinister. He might have the second cross out, but... I don't know. Well, uh, Sinister is kind of good with Mirror, because if he doesn't have cross out... Well, yeah, of course he does have cross out. But if he didn't have cross out, it would sort of force him to summon two guys, then we get to Mirror Force. So Sinister is, you know, good with Mirror Force. Oh, and he's gonna tribute for Thunder Dragon. Okay, that's fair. Well, that's rough. 
I mean, we kind of have to mirror force this. I mean, we don't have to, but like, we'd basically be hoping to get very lucky if we don't mirror force. I mean, our opponent's deck has a lot of bricks, so if he just if he just draws bricks for a while, uh, speaking of bricks, we can win. Hopefully, our opponent just activates Pot of Greed here, and we get to dust shoot him. Oh wow, I'm just a fucking master, apparently. Never been so happy to see a Pot of Greed in my life. Uh. So yeah, we obviously send back the spy, leaving him with T Drag, Solemn, Sinister. Yeah, this is a weird ass game. And like we're still like definitely behind. Like the Sinister is really good just because he can like block our hits for a while. Like one of our crossouts are gone too. Or he can summon it and attack. I mean. You know, the old 17 turn clock, or whatever this is. Oh, Breaker's actually a pretty good draw here. I mean, he probably has to Solemn it, but like, you know, making him use his Solemn. Oh, they're both Solemns, because he set Solemn in the middle zone and then flipped another Solemn. So that's kind of rough, because now we have to. <laughs> now our next card gets Solemn too. Oh my god. Yeah, this is this is actually pretty gross. Yeah, we just drew like so bad both these games. And our opponent like has done pretty well at putting pressure on us. All right. So yeah, he got us there. But yeah, so my point was is, you know, goat control is in sort of like the modern goat control era is mostly built to beat the mirror and chaos recruiter. But then people like pretty quickly figured out that chaos recruiter wasn't very good. So then what happened is like instead of the Azura Priest and the DD Warrior Lady, which are really good against Chaos Recruiter, Goat players started cutting those for like Abyss Soldier. Which Abyss Soldier is very, very good in the Goat Mirror but, like, pretty bad against, like, everything else. So now it's like you just have this Goat Control deck that's literally built to beat other copies of Goat Control, which, like, doesn't logically make any sense. And that was why I was kind of saying before I, you know, sort of got distracted by the match in progress, is, like, in this time when I was saying, like, why are you playing Goat Control? No player could give me, like, a real answer. They give very vague, like, hand-wavy answers, like, oh, it's the most consistent, which is just a thing that you made up, right? Like, there's no way to measure consistency and be like, oh, man, you know, my deck is exactly 9 out of 10 consistency points, right? It's just an opinion. It's just a thing that you've made up, right? It's like it's like saying, oh, yeah, Goat Control's a good deck because I'm a Sagittarius. Like, you know, it's, 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 it's horoscopy, right? It's not based on anything real. So, you know, so I think what kind of happened is the reason that people were so quick to abandon Goat Control is that they didn't really have any good reasons for playing it in the first place. So obviously, like, when you're not doing something for a real reason it's very easy to just be like oh wait no i'm gonna do something else and like from what i see in general with with the Yu-Gi-Oh players this goes beyond goat format really um consistency literally isn't a thing dna like it's an abstract concept that people have made up to justify their sort of preconceived notions about what makes it that good like, in games where people, like, literally play card games for a living, like in Magic the Gathering, there is, like, very little talk of consistency. Because it's not, it's not, like, a tangible reason to play a deck. Like, I could make a deck of 40 vanilla monsters, and it would be extremely consistent at drawing vanilla monsters, 
it would argue, I mean, it would by far be the most consistent deck in the format, right? Deck with 40 vanilla monsters, easily the most consistent deck in the format. Um, and yet, obviously, it's not good. So, like, again, it's, it's like saying my deck is good because it has lots of cards that start with the letter C. You know, like, I don't know, maybe Chaos Sorcerer is one. Is there any other card that starts the letter C? I don't know. My point is, is that you're basically making up a concept and just attaching it to a deck to assert that it's good, which, like, isn't how logic works. Like, first, you have to prove that the thing that you invented, one, is real, and two, that it actually has any, you know, correlation with what makes a deck good. Oh, so he's... Yeah, he's probably just playing Chaos. I don't know. Yeah, it's fine, I guess. Yeah, we're just gonna do the obvious play. Sometimes the obvious play is the best play. Uh... Do we want to do anything about this Kaiku? Do we want to ring this? Do we want to ring this Kaiku or not? I think there's pros and cons. I think we'll just ring the Kaiku. Especially since I'm pretty sure we're just up against, you know, standard Chaos deck. And we're probably not going to get, like, a better ring target anytime soon. Oh, that's that's a good card to hit off Merchant. But yeah, so the point is, is that like, if no one knows why they're playing a deck, then like, it's very easy for them to just, to just, you know, decide not to play that deck. And... No, I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. One, one, there's no such thing as a, like, a casual game versus a non-casual game, right? There are simply casual players versus competitive players, right? Like, is basketball a competitive game or a casual game? Well, the answer is it's both, right? I mean, people play in the NBA, but then there are also people that just play pickup games with their friends. So it comes down to... Like, are you playing a game because you enjoy the act of, you know, outplaying other people? That's what it means to play to win. But yet I talk to these people that are supposedly playing to win, and, like, the things that they do are not, like, based on anything real, tangible, and logical. It's based entirely upon emotion. So what I was gonna, like, get into saying is that I find in Yu-Gi-Oh!, there are two types of players, mostly. Obviously, they're like the 1%, you know, the, the sort of the Patrick Hobans and Dale Belitas of the world that are, like, actually really good. But, like, the other 99% um, are basically one of two kinds of players. And they either, A, do the things that they like, right? You know, I like to play Goat Control, or I like to play Solemn Judgment or, you know, in modern format, I like to play Spell Strikers or whatever it may be. There's those types of players. And then there's the people who just play what everyone else is playing because, you know, it's easy and it makes them feel comfortable. Right? And obviously, like, neither of those things are logical. Now, neither of them are inherently bad. Like, I'm not trying to say that, like, if you're a casual player and, like, or even sort of like that weird gray area where you're like, oh, I'm kind of casual, kind of competitive, whatever. That's fine. Like, you're allowed to play however you want to play. But I would talk to people, oh, yeah, I'm I'm in it to win it. And yet, like, they've put very little effort into the game. So it's like, at least be honest about it, right? You know, at least be honest here. Uh, 
Do we care about this set monster? Like Faith is fine. Yeah, his his set monster's fine. We don't we don't care about his set monster. So yeah, and so so sort of like to get on with you know, sort of to move more along this thought. Um you know, I, I posted a question on, on YouTube yesterday. I don't know how many, maybe a couple of you saw it. Uh, where I said, you know, explain, I said, you know, forget forget about mentioning the deck, right? You know, the name of the deck's irrelevant. But explain why you think the best deck in GOAT format is the best deck in GOAT format, right? Your opinion, No, no right or wrong answer. And no one gave, like, a real answer to that question. Like, you can go back and read all of people's answers, and it was just a bunch of vague nonsense, right? Sucks for Chain's book here. Oh, he had Dust Shoot. He got back where Geki Break and didn't set it. That is bizarre. So, the point is... I guess I don't really know what the point is. The point is, is that, like, much in the same way, you know, that I think that people were just playing Goat Control because either A, they just wanted to play it, or B, they saw everyone else play it, it's the same thing today with all these Chaos decks, right? People haven't really learned. I mean, they've learned a little, but, like, they haven't really learned. Like, their process hasn't changed. Their logic hasn't changed. There's just a new deck that people either like to play, which is fine, or are bandwagoning, which is also fine. But it's not that, like, Goat Control is, like, this terrible deck. Right? Um... And it's not that, like, Chaos is unbeatable. I mean, Chaos is definitely not unbeatable. I think Goat Control, again, you know, kind of like with GameStop, right? I think it was sort of overplayed before, and it's underplayed now. Which, you know, is, is fine. So, I think, you know, in this current meta, you know, just kind of like, just kind of like a stock, right? When a stock is uh, undervalued, what do you do? You buy it. When a stock is overvalued, what do you do? Sell it. So now's a good time to be buying some goat control stock. That's all I'm saying. Oh, wow. He had heavy into duo. That's brutal. Man, our opponents, two in a row, have had some pretty, you know, brutal... Brutal uh, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, so to speak. Oh, he drew a second scapegoat, which is, like, the worst card in our deck. Yeah, that's... Defied Cupcake, that's not a real answer either. That could... That's just... Again, that's... That's abstract. That's not tangible. Like, a deck is good because it has specific advantages against the rest of the meta, right? So, like, if someone says, like oh, a deck's the best because, like, it has Chaos Sorcerer. Okay, well, then by that logic, I guess everyone in current format should be playing Chaos Sorcerer, right? Like, that's not a real reason. Yeah, last this long. Again, that's that has nothing to do with winning games. Decks that last long don't win games. Decks that last long last long. So, again, it's like, a lot of these choices, you know, with this particular list are, um, you know, they're built to beat the meta. That's all that's going on here. So it's like when I talk about, you know, it's like when I, like if you watch how good players talk about the decks they play, right? This goes for, you know, this is especially true in Magic, but Yu-Gi-Oh too. Like if you watch how like, like Chris Provic talked about why he played Monarchs, he never made any mention of oh, you know, card advantage this, tempo that, consistency this. He was like, no, I'm playing Royal Decree 
because it's specifically good against the meta. I'm playing Blowback Dragon because it's specifically good against the meta, right? He talked about matchups, and he talked about how his cards were good in the particular matchups that, like, he actually expected to see. And that's what makes a deck good, right? So what I'm saying, like, you know, people couldn't articulate why they were playing Goat Control, it's because they weren't thinking about matchups at all, right? Like, obviously, like, if you're just way better than everyone else, like, matchups don't really matter. But usually you're not way better than everyone else. Even I'm not way better than everyone else. I Maybe mean, you can see that here. Like, I'm probably better than this guy, and I'm getting shot on, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's weird, this guy still like hasn't set this Raigeki break. I mean, presumably one of those is probably the Raigeki break. Oh, I like to see that. My hand's kind of bad. No, I mean, I mean, part of it, like this particular game, like the heavy duo combo, in this format, like heavy duo is very difficult to play around because like, you can really only play around one, but not the other. Like, you can set all your cards to play around duo, or you could keep all your cards in hand to play around heavy. Um. But, like, you, you can't really do both. Dueling book's not letting me click here, but I'm trying to target the middle. Yeah, that one was the right Geki break. Yeah, this is brutal. I mean, it's not necessarily a circle. Like, there are some times where, like, it, it's rare, but there are some times where, like, there's just a deck that's just way better than everything else and no deck, and, like, the competing decks can't really hope to, uh, you know, to really do anything about it. But, again, sort of the point here is that, like, a deck is good because it beats the meta. So that's, like, what you should always be trying to do. I could, I literally guarantee I could beat the average Chaos deck, like, with five different decks. Like, okay, Empty Jar, positive matchup against Chaos. Library FTK, positive matchup against Chaos. Reasoning Gate, positive matchup against Chaos. Warrior, positive matchup against Chaos. Like, I just named four decks without... Literally without even thinking. So, yeah, it's like people just have the same attitude about Chaos now they had about Goat Control then. If, like, these Chaos decks, like, these aren't new lists, right? People, like, knew these lists three years ago. And yet, yet three years ago, everyone was, you know, convinced, oh yeah, there's, there's no way, like, a Chaos deck could ever be the best deck. Yeah, and he is attacking in the wrong order here. So yeah, I mean, I, like, personally, like, as a competitive player, I hope people keep playing Chaos, because it's, like, it is by far, like, one of the easiest decks to prepare for. You know exactly what they're gonna do, like, there's plenty of side deck cards that are good. Oh man, this is kind of brutal. Uh, are we just dead? Let's see. Saying in 4,000. No, we're not dead yet. But yeah, but people just don't really, like, think about this game, like, in terms of, of matchups. They think about it in abstract things like, you know, ceilings and consistency, which is just made up stuff. Yeah, I mean, the the best deck, like, that's kind of, you know, sort of, I don't know what the term is, saying that 
you're, you're just sort of being redundant by saying that the best deck is the deck that wins the most. I think Mataz the Zapper is actually decent. Like, probably not main deck, but I think it... I think, like, like against Goat Control, Mataz is good. So I think it's a pretty reasonable side deck card. Uh, so what do we need to draw here? Fortunately, our Snatch Seal's already gone. We need, like, Pot Agreed into the Nuts. Uh, I mean, we're technically not dead yet. Well, we're dead now. I want to see if he reveals his face down monster, though. Yeah, I mean, Mataza can be good. It, it, it sort of depends. Um, again, like, people... People sort of think black and white the same way that people did in, like, 2005, just kind of in different ways. Like, back in 2005, people were like, oh, this card is good, this card is bad. And, like, it's never that, like, simple. Obviously, there are cards like Pot Agreed where it's like, okay, this is, like, obviously good. But, like, everything else is is very dependent. Um, you know, it's dependent on, like, a lot of factors. And people, like, I feel like... The number one flaw that most GOAT format players have, just in general, like deck building, in-game, whatever, the number one flaw that most GOAT format players have is they base their decision on like one or two factors when usually there's like five or six relevant factors, right? And so in a way, it's kind of like people are, are underthinking would probably be, um, it would be one way to put it. Flip control? So he's playing like flip control chaos, basically. Probably. Yeah, I want meta and swap. Yeah, book of mood is kind of shitty against this deck. Even like Dust Shoot, it's like, it can be good, but it can also not be good. I might just do this. I mean, the Air Knight should probably just be a Zaborg for this matchup. Um, Kaiku, I don't know. I could take or leave Kaiku. Yeah, he's basically, I'm pretty sure he's just playing like kind of like a flip control chaos kind of thing. Where it's like, because he's playing like Thunder Dragon, so he's definitely playing chaos something. But like, he's also playing Mask of Darkness. So it's it's probably just like a flip control chaos kind of thing. Uh, well, if our faith lives, the game is just over. So I'm just gonna hope that our faith lives and the game's over. Like this kind of opening is like some decks can deal with this opening more easily than others, but like flip control kind of like has a bad day against this opening a lot of the time. It's like, Grace, Graceful's fine. I mean, he didn't discard Thunder Dragon, so... Oh, he's got Knight Assailant. Man. It's every time. Takochi's fine, though. We're also, we're also okay with Takochi. And he drew the Thunder Dragon afterwards. So he's got... Eight cards in hand, one Dakochi, two Thunder Dragons, five unknowns. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, like I don't know. So so the overall point that I was making is that I, I feel like most people like they think they're making decisions like based on what is right, but I think in reality, like most people, including myself, most people, most people are very biased. Like, obviously, humans are naturally biased. And I think in Yu-Gi-Oh! in particular, for some reason, like, for some reason, there is this, like, desire to conform that 
I don't really like understand. Where it's like, you know, I would, you know, in the past, I'm not even really talking about GOAT format. This is probably even, like, more true of, like, most of the modern formats. Where I'd, like, have some broken deck that, like, beats the entire meta, and people, like, don't want to play it. And I'm like, why? And, like, I just publicly predict, okay, guys, this is the deck that's, like, broken. And then everyone's like, no, you're an idiot. And then, like, it you know, wins nationals or something. And, oh, I guess you're right. And, like, that would just happen, like, every year for, like, five years in a row. It kind of reminds me of, like, The X-Files. I don't know if you watch that show. Um, like, in The X-Files, you know, Mulder's like, hey, I think it was aliens. And Scully is always like, come on, Mulder, you know aliens aren't real. And Mulder's like, yeah, but the last ten times it's been aliens. She's like, yeah, but I don't think it's aliens this time. And it was always fucking aliens, guys. It was always fucking aliens. And no matter how many times Mulder is right, Scully just be like, yeah, man, aliens aren't real. Now, I'm not saying that I think that, like, aliens are real, like, in real life, but in the show, they clearly were real. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, we'll just... Uh, I don't know. I might actually just take it. I'm just going to take the hit. I know it's kind of strange, but like, I basically want him to do the same play next turn, so then we could Saku, so then we can start like doing stuff with like Merchant and Tsukiyomi. This call is also a really nice draw. It happens to be like a good draw in this particular situation. So, to sort of like get to the point, you know, I think that, again, I think the main strength of Goat Control right now, like, in general, just like the main strength, like kind of on an abstract perspective, you know, from an abstract point of view, the main strength is that it is like the least committal of like all the decks in the format. Like it really doesn't commit to any one particular strategy, which I think has its advantages. It also has its disadvantages for sure, but it also has its advantages. And I feel like if you just sort of play a goat control, like kind of a less committal warrior deck, that's where, like, a lot of the advantages in this particular meta can come in. Yeah, Rainy Day Collectibles, I did used to do magic content. It was a bit more than a couple years ago. It was, like, six years ago. And, yeah, I do think that Tin Fins are sick. I don't know, Tin Fins probably suck now. I don't know, I haven't played magic in a while. So we've seen Dakochi. Oh, we also know that he has Azura. Yeah, I'm just gonna trenchal. Cause like this is probably not Sangin. Yeah, like we want to get rid of the mask. Yeah, I don't think we want to graceful just yet. This dust is going to be like pretty good with call though, because you can probably like dust something and then like call Mystic Swordsman and attack his face down. I actually I like our position in this game a lot actually. I like how this game is developing. Yeah, it's weird. It's like I don't know why. It's funny. Like I don't think that I have a distinctive voice. Like to me, my voice sounds normal, but everyone else thinks I have a very distinctive voice. Yeah. So now we're gonna Saku. And then now that he's at like three thousand, we can like start poking with Takochi, which is pretty sick. Oh, of course he set does shoot. If he has Solemn, he just kind of has to use it, in my opinion. I mean, he obviously doesn't have to do anything. Sangin's actually a really good draw. 
Yeah, Sangin is an amazing draw, actually. One of the best draws, like, that was, you know, in our deck. Okay, so... Yeah, I think we'll just call Exile Force and try to go for game. Yeah. I mean, we knew something was going to happen. We just wanted to make him use it, you know. Uh, and Duo's already gone, so we don't have to worry about getting Duo'd. Yeah, it's pretty safe to just pass here. And, like, unless he, I don't know, unless he does, like, like BLS Snatch Steal, like, I just don't see how he's going to win. Does he really have BLS Snatch Steal? Okay. Just Thunder Dragon. Even if he has, like, another Solemn set, I think we're still good, right? Because, like, he Solemns our charity, and then they just snatch for game, so... Yeah, good game. Uh, I feel like the skilled magicians, like, whether it's light or dark... You never want to play the skilled magicians, but sometimes, like, you just kind of have to, based on the way that you built your deck. So, I mean, Blade Knight, I think... I mean, even though, like, Blade Knight isn't, like, nearly as insane as it was, like, a year ago, it's still a pretty good card. I mean, clearly I think it's better than skilled magicians, because we're playing a Blade Knight and no skilled magician. So, he sided in his Zura Priest, which is kind of interesting. That could make our meta swap things go badly. And we cited a book. We have, like, no outs to this Azura Priest. I mean, we just happen to have, like, the one Saku in our deck this time. But in general, we do not have a lot of outs to Azura Priest. What do we do about that? Ugh, it's awkward. I mean, Death Shoot could be the solution. We can also side in Kaiku, because, like, Azura can't attack over Kaiku. Uh, I might do, like... Yeah, especially going second, I think, like, Kaiku's going to be better than Dokochi. And... I don't know, you could do like suck instead of meta. I don't know, this might be... Maybe I just don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. It's possible. Honestly, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, in the online meta right now, I mean... Uh, to answer your question, Bobby, yeah, it probably is. Yeah, this dust shoot's fine. I don't know why he's siding in dust shoot against goat control. Oh, I think he main dust shoot. Whatever, maybe he like mained it and didn't side it out. But anyways, I, I would say like probably like th the best deck in like this particular meta at like this exact like minute in time is like probably reasoning gate because like it's pretty good against all the chaos decks. And, like, a lot of the Chaos decks have stopped maining Kaikus because they realize that's just not a very good idea. Um, so, yeah, I think Reasoning Gate is a pretty good call right now. Like, it's, like if obviously, like, you have to know how to play the deck, right? I think Reasoning Gate is probably, like, one of the most difficult decks to play in the format. But if you actually know how to play it, I think it's a pretty good deck. It also does pretty well against... I mean, Warriors, it depends. The Warriors, it depends on their list and their side deck. But yeah, Warriors, especially if you're, like, if you're playing Reasoning Gate with, like, two main deck brain controls, like, Warriors is gonna have a pretty hard time against that. Even though I opened, like, Potigree Cross out, this hand isn't, like, the greatest. 
Because the problem is we have, like, no threat. So, like, double dust shoot with, like, no threat. Or, not dust shoot. Double dust tornado with no threat isn't exactly what you're hoping to see. And it's like, we don't really have, like, a way to deal with threats either. I mean, if all our opponent does for a while is just Sangin, we should be fine. I mean, like we drew our own Sangin, which I think is pretty good. See, I'm chain link one, he's chain link two, so his Sangin resolves first. We're probably just both going to get Sinister. Oh, he's going to get Night Assailant. That's fine. Night of Sailor is an interesting choice. Night of Sailor seems like kind of a strange choice. What, did, what does he want Night of Sailor for? Unless he's already got one Night of Sailor and he's like, oh, I want double Night of Sailor. Double Night of Sailor sick. I mean, that's, that's possible. Uh, I mean, I would say like the, the main mistake that I notice Reasoning Gate players making is like playing the reasonings in Monster Gates like way too early. Like, say you're, like, going first, right? Say it's a new match, and it's, like, totally unknown matchup. And you're going first with Reasoning Gate. You should never activate Reasoning on turn one. And yet, I see, like, I don't know, probably, like, half of Reasoning Gate players doing that. They just, like, play all of the Reasonings and Monster Gates as soon as they draw them. And, like, that's just not, like, at all what you're supposed to do with that deck. You're supposed to, like... It's basic... Reasoning Gate is basically an OTK deck that can sometimes outcard advantage your opponent, right? That's really all it is. And, like, when you're playing sort of, like, an OTK deck, you're not trying to, like, play all of your combo pieces one by one. Like, that's not how a combo deck works. You wait until you have, like, you know, a large number of combo pieces, and then you just, and then you just play them all. You know what I mean? I gotta go for risky play here. I kind of have to. Problem is, I can't just take this as a return. Oh, this is fucking brutal. See, I'm not worried about this heavy. What I am worried about is if he has heavy to bait the solemn, and then he has cross out for the sinister. If he has like both of those together, oh, whoops. Yeah, I'm not it. I instinctively subtracted four thousand, which is kind of hilarious. Yeah, if he has cross out here, like, we just can't really win. But he luckily does have cross out, so we still get to play Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Noel's list of Reasoning Gate, I think Noel's list is good, but at the same time, I also think it can be improved. Um, which I don't know, maybe some people are trying to improve it, but I think people have it like really given some of the choices a lot of thought like in my opinion one of like one of the best cards in reasoning gate as a whole is scapegoat and like mating and siding zero doesn't feel like right to me like we could debate on like what the correct number is to like main or side but like i don't think it's zero Oh my god, that's that's brutal. I mean we could actually dust tornado to set pot agreed. Does that matter? Well I'm trying to think about this logically. We go minus one now so that we can go plus one next turn. So it's a net of the same cards. Yeah, we'll just let this resolve. Plus, by taking so long to think, he probably thinks we have another Solemn set. So yeah, that makes sense. He had the card destruction, so he searched the Knight Assailant to make his card destruction better, because he already had Sinister. Okay, that's fair. No, there's there's not really much of a point in setting Pottery there. It doesn't, it doesn't accomplish anything, unless we think that our Dust Tornado is going to be dead, but since I don't think our Dust Tornado is dead, there's, like, no, there's no point in doing that. Why would 
pretty graceful now. That makes, like, no sense. He's getting back Sinister next turn, and yet he just graceful right away. It's, like, unreal. Like, our opponents just, like, have no idea what we're doing, yet we're just getting shafted here. So, yeah, he's got Faith, two Thunder Dragons, with eight in hand. Yeah, eight in hand. Yeah, I mean, I don't know enough enough about your deck to say, like, what the correct uh, thing to do is there regarding skill edition versus blade knights. But again, it's like, you have to weigh the pros and cons of particular meta. Uh, the one thing that I do like about... I mean... There's there's a few things that I like about skill dark edition. I think skill dark edition does, like, two good things in the meta right now. One is that, unlike cards like Blade Knight and Kaiku, it's a reasonable Book of Moon target. Right? So if you, like, attack with your skilled Dark Magician or whatever, and it gets... And they Saku it or whatever, and it gets Book of Moon, you're just fine with that, right? But obviously, like, you don't really want to, like, Book of Moon your Blade Knight because it only has a thousand defense, and then you have to, like, protect it. So that's one good thing. The other thing that I like about, you know, Skilled Dark Magician, this doesn't really apply to Skilled White, because I don't know which one you're talking about. The other thing I like about Skilled Dark Magician is that a lot of people like to side a uh, Cypher Soldier right now. And, like, against Warrior decks. So having skills, uh, Skilled Dark as something that can out a Cypher Soldier in whatever battle position it's in is pretty nice. What do we want to discard? What's our opponent used? I'm trying to think if Zaborg is a card that we're going to be able to use this game. Oh, problem is he's used like no Solemns, which is like really awkward. So I don't want to like tribute for Zaborg and then get Solemns. Yeah, I don't know. It might not be the correct play, but you know. Plus, like by not playing Zaborg this game, we also don't have to like worry about it getting ringed for game. God, Dueling Book sucks sometimes. This is why I'm building my own simulator. Like, I try to attack and I accidentally end up banishing my own guy. He did use heavy, right? Yeah, he definitely did use heavy. Yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a... kind of a rough matchup. Or a rough game. Because there's just, like, a lot we're gonna have to deal with this game, and... we can't really afford... For like anything to go wrong. Like already we're having something going wrong here. Our opponent just like forgets the sinister, of course, but you know, there's just nothing we can do about it. Interesting. Drew Metal, which is actually a pretty good card to draw. Yeah, this is going to be a hard game, but we can still win. Oh, and I actually forgot my own Sinister after I made fun of my opponent for forgetting his. I mean, luckily we don't need it this turn.
I wouldn't mind if my guy got Raigeki breaked here, but I don't want my guy to get booked. Oh, because, yeah, it's like now we our Blade Knight doesn't get its effect. Oh, uh, this is this sucks. This really sucks. Yeah, I mean, there's probably not any realistic way that we're winning now. And yeah, I have no idea why he would decide to use Solemn there, but you know, there's just nothing we can do about it because our hand is awful. Yeah, I don't know. How are we going to win? Ironically enough, I'd probably rather this set be a Faith than like a... Well, no, he can't, he can't have Mask of Darkness. We cross that out. Yeah, Rid is dead because he has Azura. Yeah, that sucks. We've just kind of been drawn pretty bad. Because, like, last time I streamed this deck, I think I won, like, every match. But it is pretty rough. Like, I, I mean, I actually think, like, our matchup against most of these Chaos decks is pretty good because we've got, like, you know, all these Warriors. We're basically just playing, like, a more flexible Warrior deck. Uh, But, yeah, I mean, Azura is kind of hard to deal with. Azura is weird, because it's, like, it's bad against most of the meta, but, like, the part of the meta that it's not bad against, it's really good. Like, Mimic Chaos is, like, Mimic Chaos, Angel Chaos, and, like, Goat Control. Azura is, like, all pretty, pretty fucking good against all those. This is an interesting hand. I like that we have duo though, just because you know we'll find out what we're playing against on turn one, probably. Uh, so yeah, prob I mean, some sort of chaos deck more than likely. Okay, we're playing against Mystic Tomato and Summon Skull. Alright, yeah, I, I don't really want to... This isn't the match that I want to stream, so we're going to move on to a different one. Like, I wouldn't normally do that, but, like, our opponent's literally playing Summon Skull. Like, I'm not trying to waste your guys' time. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is unfortunate that, like, a lot of times we just don't really play against anything that's, like, interesting to play against. Because it's not that I, like, I don't know, it's not that I don't mind playing against, like, an off-meta deck, but, like, if our opponent's, like, clearly not even trying, like, that's, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, kind of different. It's like if you're playing Melee and you've been playing, like, really close Fox Dittos, and then, like, your opponent switches to, like... Bowser, right? Like, it's like, come on, man. Don't you, like, respect me enough to, like, at least try? Of course, now it's like, okay, there we go. I mean, don't get me wrong, I definitely have lost to Bowsers. I'm not saying that I've never lost to a Bowser. That's... That's, like, not where I'm going with this. Like, believe me, there's plenty of melee players that could fuck me up with Bowser. That's, that's like, that's not the point. Like, it's one thing... It's, like, one thing if I'm playing against, like... 
I don't know, if I'm playing against, like, Mango or Mewtwo King and he goes Bowser, I'm like, okay, that's fair, right? Because, like, you know, if we just both play our play our mains, like, I'm just gonna get shit on, right? But if, like, we're going really close with our mains and then you switch to Bowser, that's just disrespectful. Right? Yeah, I think we're doing fine here. A lot of people don't realize that, like, Activate Duo instead of Spell or Trap Pass is actually not a very good opening. Like, it's not a bad opening, but, like, it's not a good opening just because it has Duo, you know what I mean? I'm thinking which one we want to dust. I guess we'll just dust the new one. Of course, Dueling Book won't let me click on things. Yeah, it's like, it really depends. It really depends. Like, Duo, first of all, is like clearly the worst of the three Trinity, right? I mean, let's, let's, just, let's just be honest here. Duo is clearly the worst of the three Trinity. So, like, having Duo, like, plus no real follow up is like. You know what I mean? Like, nothing to really worry about. I mean, ironically enough, like, Duo is probably better against Goat Control than it is against most decks. But, like, I'm still not really worried. You know what? I'm just gonna Heavy Storm here. Just because, like, I just don't want to... I mean, it's probably not another book, but it could be Ring. And, like, I don't want to get my Thousand Eyes ringed or booked or torrential or whatever. Yeah, I mean, and, like, Delinquent Duo is also just not very good, um, it's just not very good against most Chaos decks, because, like, they're like, oh, great, I get to discard a bunch of light in the dark, so, like, you know, who cares? Like, it's definitely, like, it's definitely good, but it's not, like, really good. It's not like, oh, fuck, I got duoed, how am I gonna win now, right? It's not, it's not like that. And our opponent's probably playing Mimic Chaos, which is which is a pretty tough matchup for Goat Control. I say that because, like, Mimic Chaos is, like, the only deck that plays, like, Tomato, Book, and Goats. Yeah, Duo is obviously, like, a bad top deck a lot of times. It's not a very good late game. Whereas the other Trinity pieces are good at any stage of the game. Is there any argument not to duo? Not for him, if he's, if he's going first. Yeah, going first against an unknown deck? Yeah, you definitely duo there. Again, you know, last time, of course, we saw our opponent was playing Summon Skull, but, like, the main thing that you gain off of, like, a turn one duo, you know, new match, um, is that you know what your opponent is playing, probably, and then, like, that can uh, influence your your other plays. I mean, I think we kind of have to meta. Um, I mean, I think there could be an argument for not playing Heavy Storm. Obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty. Like, usually people don't, like, play Tomato with Goats, like, at once because they're not good together. And again, it's like, if somehow he had, like, a ring, I wouldn't have really liked that. No, I mean, because, like, if things went according to plan... Um, in the sense that, like, if we went meta, take the tomato, and attacked him directly, having, like, a guy attacking him directly for 14 every turn with a cross out in our hand 
is like a pretty good source of pressure. Like life points do matter in this game. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think like just taking another tomato hit would be terrible. But the problem is, it's like we don't have a way to protect our goat. So it's like if he, for example, like had a Zero Priest in his hand, like we just hate our life, right? So, so yeah, I mean, like obviously, um, oh my god, and he just top deck sinister. Are you kidding me? Okay, I guess our opponent's just playing, like, Goat Control with Tomato and Azura. Oh, even the Snatch Seal is not great. I mean, we're gonna play it, because it's like, what the hell else are we gonna do? But it just sucks, because, like, again, life points matter, and the fact that we just get to let our opponent gain a bunch of life every turn isn't really great. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah, yeah, we could, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, we could, but it's like, at the, same, at the same time, I'm not sure what we gain from it. I mean, I guess the main thing that we gain from it is if we think we're behind, and we just want to, I don't know, sort of draw a pass every turn, then, uh, then we gain that, that we can kind of slow down the game. Our opponent forgot to gain a thousand, so I'm gonna remind him. I mean, ironically enough, like, yeah, it is, it is weird because I'm not sure if this is like a very good matchup for us, but I think we can still win game one. And even if we lose game one, I definitely think we can take the next two games. Um, having like a cross out here is like kind of nice. You know, just good card to have in general. Because our opponent's probably going to set something, and we want to be able to have an answer. Like, if he sets a monster here, it's probably either a Faith or a Sinister, and I want to cross out either one. And if he wants to just attack me for 300, that's fine too. Like, I don't think that's a very good play unless he has, like, an Air Knight in his hands. Which would suck. It would really suck if he had Air Knight in his hand somehow. Solemn's not a bad draw either. I mean, it's not a great draw, but it's not a bad one. Wow, of course he just does have the Air Knight. Oh, man. Ah. Uh... Yeah, this, this kind of blows. I'm trying to think, what's our plan here? Our opponent's getting back Sinister. I don't know, I, I, I think we should probably have to attack. I mean, we don't really want to get, like, Sakud, but, you know. Yeah, if the attack goes through, I'm happy. Basically, I think what we're hoping is our opponent bricks for a while, we cross out whatever monster he plays, and we, you know, just try to win that way. That's, like, kind of our plan in this game. Like, again, whether this is a Faith or a Sinister, this cross out's going to be great. Oh, uh, I guess I don't really care about that. Yeah, our opponent's just basically playing, like, Goat Control with Tomatoes and Azura. Ugh. Or not Tomatoes and Azura. Tomatoes and Abyss Soldier. Although we might be playing Azura too. Ironically enough, so far this actually looks like one of my old Goat Control lists. I mean, it's, it's probably... Well, no, I didn't play Mimic, so it's, it's not exactly the same. Uh... So do we want to kill all the goats? The reason to do that would be that so he can't meta, but he has Sinister in his hand anyways, so... It's not necessarily very productive. 
So yeah, I think we're just gonna attack a goat, set to Kochi, say go. Like if he doesn't have something like meta or creature swap, we should be fine. Even Abyss Soldier wouldn't be fine. I don't really care if he has a second Abyss Soldier. If he has Premature for the Abyss Soldier in his grave, though, that's a different story. Yeah, I, I pretty much never run into Goat Control on Dueling Book. It's pretty rare. It's definitely like less than it's definitely less than one in ten matches. Yeah, I don't really care about that cross out. I mean I kinda do, but you know, I don't I don't care about it that much. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, we're not drawing well at all. I think it's a Borg's a good card, but I don't think it's particularly good in Goat Control. Like it doesn't, it doesn't really like have any synergy with the rest of the deck. I mean, it's I don't know, it's a level five meta target, I guess, but it's not like real synergy. God, I hope I draw like, well, Snatch Steel's gone. Be nice if it wasn't gone. BLS would be a good draw. Well, no, we don't have a dark. Yeah, there's just not a lot of good draws left in our deck. We get to deal 13, which is okay, I guess. But unless our opponent's hand is just absolute trash, we are not in a good position at all. Set Sinister Pass. Come on, you know you want to. Oh, maybe. Okay, that's that's fine too. Oh man, that's that's so good because he has an air knight in his grave. Uh, yeah, we're we're not in a great position here. Again, like, the best draw for us would normally be BLS, but we have, like, no dark, so... Yeah, things are gonna be pretty tough. I mean, we can still draw a meta. Oh, no, both of our metas are gone. Yeah, like, pretty much every card we might want to draw here. Oh, yeah, we're just dead. Because, yeah, he has, he has Abyss, and that's two... Oh, no, we're not dead. We're, we're very close to being dead. Okay, well now we're definitely dead. Uh, so yeah, I mean we definitely want third goats against this. I mean we want third goats, third meta. We want morphing. We want Azura. We actually have like a pretty decent number of like side side deck cards to this matchup. Uh, question is what we take out. Uh, we could consider taking out the Rota package, especially against this list. Oh, that's... Smiling Vagrants, is this you? Or is that... Okay. Because when people say GG after I just lost, I'm wondering, like, is this guy just watching my stream here or what? Uh, 
yeah, I might just take out the Rota package because against, yeah, against this list, like Mystic level two isn't that great because it's kind of like a more aggressive list. Like Blade Knight is okay, although I also have Azura for a light. I don't know. There's sort of different different approaches we can take here. Yeah, I think I want to try this. Uh, and we need to take out one more card. Uh, probably Psalm, especially against more aggressive lists. Probably don't want Psalm. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just I've had people who've done that before, so it's like, you know. Uh, well, let's think. How are we gonna do this here? Setting morphing in two traps is just way too obvious. Uh, setting morphing ring probably works out fine though. Unless he has a very specific hand, morphing ring turn one should should work out fine. Yeah, breaker is not one of the specific hands. Yeah, actually, I'd love to see breaker here. Everything is going according to plan so far. Now, I mean, Mor Morphing Ring, there's not a lot of ways Morphing Ring can go wrong. Like, the worst thing that can happen is our opponent someone saying it in attacks. That's like the absolute worst case scenario. Duo is actually great. Like, we don't care about that at all. They're definitely discarding a monster. It's just a question of which monster, right? Yeah, we're probably just going to get rid of our own breaker. Because I don't really want to, like, summon Breaker and try to flip Morphing in case he has Torrential. No, I think I, I like keeping Suki only better here. Because we can't really do this play if we keep Breaker. Like, maybe we can summon Breaker, but then we're, again, we're kind of just taking a big risk. I, mean, I guess we can set breaker and flip morphing jar, but I'd probably rather have a set Tsukiyomi than a set breaker, right? And it's also kind of interesting too, because like if our opponent goes for some like play where he like book of moons or morphing jar and tries to attack, we can use dust to like set one of the cards in our hands. Um, it'll still be kind of bad for us because we lose BLS, but we'll at least like not also lose Mirror Force. Morphing jar games are always weird. Like go format is definitely like a lot less complicated when you know there's no morphing jars involved. Cause then here next turn we have the option to like morphing jar again. You know what I'm saying? Like we can like flip our Sukiyomi, target our morphing jar, morphing jar again. Like, like I said, there's morphing jar is a very like complicated card. Uh, j just in general. Widespread ruin. He might just be playing it over Sakuretsu armor. Uh, 
Oh, now things get interesting. Now things get interesting. Yeah, we're just gonna Warping Jar this sucker again. We're just gonna go for the full meme. Okay, that's that's unfortunate. That's like the only thing that I didn't want to see. It's fine. I mean, we got him to use his ring, I guess. Is there any way? Man, I wish there was like some way we could put Merchant in our grave somehow. Hold on, is there any? Is wait, is he just dead here? Is he just dead? Oh yeah, he's he's just dead. Yeah, we summon Merchant, Tarantula Field, summon BLS, call Breaker, attack for game. Yeah, he's just dead. What a weird game. Yeah, I mean we got we got kind of lucky that game. I mean I think we like played it well, but I think we also got lucky. You know what I mean? Like two aren't mutually exclusive. Sometimes you can play well and get lucky. That's the best combination. So you'll you'll, you'll question: Is it better to be lucky or good? The answer is both. It's better to be both. Oh, this is... Well, I mean, we have Snatch Air Knight, I guess. But other than that, I don't love this hand. Duo's fine. It's like apologizing for opening Duo. I don't care. Yeah, discard my Air Knight. See if I give a fuck. Yeah, we just drew second Tsukiyomi. Ugh! Yeah, I would have liked to... I would have preferred to draw, like, almost anything other than a second Tsukiyomi. Yeah, we're just playing one Air Knight. I mean, it's pretty good in this matchup. I mean, there's not that many matchups where Air Knight's just terrible. Yeah, we can, we can still win here. Oh, man, he hit the snatch. Well, if he didn't hit the... Well, I don't know. I guess it's not the end of the world. I would really have preferred that he just hit one of the Tsukiyomis, though. Uh, this kind of sucks. It really does. So he flipped Faith. He didn't Tsukiyomi the Faith. Yeah, I'd probably just duel him back. And we probably end up passing. I mean, maybe there's some card that he could discard that changes things somehow, but I'd say it's doubtful. Yeah, I don't. I mean, we know he doesn't have Sukiomi. I mean, we probably know he doesn't have Sukiomi. And I don't mind if he books his faith, so. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is like. Yeah, other than double duo, like, his hand isn't really, like, doing anything. So, yeah, I mean, I think we're just kind of fine for now. 
I mean, the only thing that's unfortunate is, like, we kind of have to, like, play something now, or else we just get duoed a third time. Yeah, it's just letting the attack go through. I was hoping he'd, like, Saku our guy, then we can, like, call him battle phase. Yeah, let's say go. I mean, basically this game, we're just kind of hoping that our opponent punts. That's, like, that's really our game plan. Either our opponent punts or we draw really well. That's like... Oh. Yeah, why am I not using my better webcam? Good question. Hold on. Oh, I need to, I need to change the thing in OBS. That's why. Oh, this sucks. We're probably losing. We're not going to lose because of the dust. We're probably losing because if he has dust, he probably has a good follow-up. He's probably going to, like, Tsukiyomi our tribe now. Oh, or he's just going to dust and set a monster and pass. That doesn't make any sense. Why would he dust, set a monster, and pass? Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do it like during siding or something. I don't want to mess around with with OBS right now. Oh, uh, we got like light in the dark, so we can try to top deck BLS. We've got ring to protect our tribe. Yeah, I mean, I think we just attack here and see what happens. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. We haven't used any crossouts yet, though. And we have ring in case he has meta, so... Again, I, I don't feel like we're totally boned yet. Like, we could definitely hang on for a few more turns based on how the game's been developing so far. But the problem is, is that, like, now that he has Sinister, we kind of have to summon another monster to inflict damage, in which case, like, then our opponent plays his Mirror Torrential. Which, I mean, I kind of think is what he has. I mean, I guess we also have the option to just not attack. But I don't see what that's going to accomplish, right? So, yeah, I don't... I feel like at this moment in time, we kind of just want to draw pass for a while, which is essentially what we're doing. So, yeah, so so this is fine. Uh, ring, ring counters Thousand Eyes. I mean, at some point, you would think we would draw a cross out, right? I mean, let's be honest here. Yeah, no no effect and zero damage. It's weird that our opponent's content to just do this, because, like, drawing and passing, like, equalizes the game state and kind of favors me as the, you know, the player who's behind. He said fuck. What's, what's the big deal? He's, like, mad that his merchant milled Tsukiyomi. Oh, I mean, I guess Tsukiyo may be pretty good against Tribe. I don't know. He's got a dark in his grave, though. Ah, oh, he can't complain that much. He got Dust, right? Actually, not super excited about Dust. I'll probably get to try to, like, set meta and bait Dust, but our opponent might not be bad enough for that to work. Yeah, I mean, we're we're definitely, like, slowly, like, creeping back into the game. I mean, we're definitely not ahead. In fact, I think we're significantly behind. But we're not, like, as behind as we were, like, a few turns ago. I don't even really have any great spells, to, to be quite honest. Uh, do we want to get Mirror Force or Torrential yet? 
Probably not. Yeah, I don't think we're ready for that to happen yet. We're just going to keep attacking. Oh, the Vindictive Magician. Okay, that was not what I was expecting at all. I'm fine with it, but that was not what I was expecting. So, we saw Tomato Game 1, so maybe he's doing, like, the Tomato Apprentice package. I mean, that's what you would assume. I wonder if my opponent's bad enough to just dust this meta here. I mean, to be fair, he's not a psychic, but... Yeah, I'm kind of making it obvious that I want you to dust my card. So yeah, so now we got, like, the ring to protect the faith. I don't know. I mean, maybe we can get back in this game by just, like, going Faith Tsukiyomi. I mean, he's, he's probably playing Apprentice, right? It's just a question of how many. See, I actually like our position now. Like, if this faith lives, if this faith lives, I love our... I am like, okay, we're back in it. If our faith doesn't live, then... You know, then we're not too happy. I mean, I guess you could play Old Vindictive because you want to make your opponent think you're playing Apprentice. Yeah, that's, this is fine. I hope he metas and we just get to ring his guy. That would be wonderful. Oh, that's that's pretty good for him, I guess. Uh, ironically enough, like Zaborg is pretty bad in goat mirrors, but it happens to be like pretty good here. Cause like he probably has an out to our Sukiomi. If he doesn't have an out to our Sukiomi, then I think he's gonna not be too happy with this Zaborg. Oh, Goats is a really good draw. I mean, one of our metas is gone, but Goats is still a pretty good draw. Because again, I think there's a chance this could be Mirror Force. And like, I kind of want to just make him use his Mirror Force here. Oh, that's fine too. Yeah, because now we have a ring. I mean, we definitely don't want to use this ring too lightly. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that's pretty good MST for him. Because now it's like we just kind of have to use our ring. I mean, we don't have to, but I mean, we kind of have to. And he's like, he still has Sinister to just block hits for days. Yeah, having ring MST were two pretty good back rows for him. Yeah, I mean, having ring MST specifically is pretty good. Because, like, the fact that ring dealt us 11 is, like, pretty important. Because it's like, then it forces us to use us, our ring, and then now we're at, like, 100. I mean, he has Sinister, two unknowns. I mean, we can top deck something and win. Like, we can top deck BLS and try to go for game. We can top deck... I don't know. We can Azura poke for seven and then hopefully have... Draw something that blocks another hit. Like, third scapegoat would be pretty good. Uh, and a Sakuretsu armor would be pretty good. And it's like, obviously, he's playing BLS main phase two? Okay. What is going on here? I mean, it, it sucks because, like, we're just dead. Because, like, he has Sinister, which can kill us. I mean, I just wish there was something we could do. But, like, you know, our opponent is just... I think he's just styling on us. He actually might be watching the stream, I think. I think he just knows that we're dead, so he's just trying to style on us. Okay, maybe he doesn't. 
I don't know. Maybe he just won't go for game here for some strange reason. Yeah, we're just dead. Yeah, it's pretty unreal. We've drawn, like, so bad all these games. I mean, that was a fairly close 2-1. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's ironic, because, like, our deck isn't bad. Like, we just end up in these situations where it's like, what can we do? You know what I mean? It was like a time I played Warriors a few weeks ago, where it's like we just, the cards that we had, like, never lined up with our opponent's threats. Well, I mean, I streamed this deck before, so it's, you know, I, I, this isn't like, I have a pretty decent sample. I mean, I think we're about even today on RPS. Yeah, we've played like four matches and we've like won two, lost two. RPSs, that is. Yeah, I mean, it probably gives you two Thunder Dragons about 5% of the time. I mean, that's... That's statistically how often you're supposed to have them. Yeah, I mean, this hand's fine. This is, this is a good going first hand, actually. Like, going second... I don't know, going second in the hand would be okay, too. But yeah, I mean, there's not a lot that we have to worry about. Oh, our opponent quit the duel. That's always fun. But yeah, it's like the worst thing that could happen here is our opponent goes summon Blade Knight attack. Yeah. Alright. Uh, thoughts? I mean, usually you play both, right? I mean, there aren't too many decks that play one without the other. So, I mean, they're just... You know what I mean? It's like saying, I don't know, thoughts on... I guess I can't come up with a great example, to be honest. I mean, they're two cards, they have different pros and cons. I mean, in general... In general, I think there's, like, a lot of, like... I think one mistake that people make... Yeah, I'm, I'm playing one and one. But as you say, like, a mistake that a lot of people make, like, sort of in... In the way that they discuss things, like, with people that they want to get advice from, is people ask what questions instead of why questions. Like, whether I think Blade Knight or Mystic Swordsman level 2 is better or whatever it doesn't really matter, so much as why I think one's better than the other. And, um, uh, which one do I want here, though? That, that's a real question. Yeah, I think we just want Mystic. Because, you know, like, I... So I get kind of distracted. I'm trying to have a conversation with the chat and trying to play a game at the same time. Uh, so yeah, this is a pretty good start for us. Obviously, I hope that we just draw like cross out off this charity, or we just draw a sinister because we're a bunch of luckers. This deck is goat control.
But anyways, kind of the point that I was trying to make that I wasn't making very well is, um... I mean, Mystic Swords level 2 is just very good in the meta. Like, Sasuke is... Oh, you mean the other Sasuke. Yeah, I mean, Mystic Swords level 2 has, has more attack. Which is pretty relevant. Actually, I don't know which one you mean. I don't know if you mean the one that's the card that's exactly like Mystic Swordsman level 2, or if you mean the coin flip guy. So depending on which one you mean, I could give you two different answers. Oh. Or maybe you mean that Sasuke. Okay, there's like three different cards you could mean. Yeah, I mean, having more attack is better, right? I mean, being wind versus earth doesn't matter at all. Yeah, I mean, the, the coin flip guy, I don't know. I, I mean, I think it can work in some decks, but I don't particularly like it here. Like, yeah, I mean, Go Control, like, largely what it's about is about sort of having... Yeah, it's, it's about sort of quantity of options. Like, none of the options in Go Control are that broken, but, like, if you have access to a lot of different options at each stage of the game, you know, the idea is that... Uh, Hopefully, one of them is the one that you need. That's that's the idea. And like Mystic Swords level two is just really good card right now. I'm sure, he just has another faith. Okay, that's fine. Oh, we got Saku and Solemn set. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, this this this, this game's going fine so far. Depending on how this game develops, this could even be like the kind of game where we just deck our opponent out. Our opponent's doing us even though he knows we have sinister. Oh, maybe he's going to go duo card destruction. That would make sense. If he doesn't card destruction here, then I have no idea what our opponent is trying to do. Yeah, so why do you think one faith is almost always better than two? What makes you say that? No, you should always you should always duo before you card destruction, because then your opponent has fewer cards in the grave, and the grave is an important resource. Yeah, that's fine. Book is definitely fine. Now we have our own duo. Hmm. It'd be sick if our set monster is Morphing Jar here. I mean, obviously it's not, but it'd be cool if it was.
yeah, I guess we'll just see what this Takochi gives us. Oh, Sang is an interesting draw. Yeah, we actually... Yeah, we definitely want to summon Sang in here. Sang is a really good draw. Because now he just gets to attack his guy. And he's like kind of screwed after that. Yeah, I think our opponent's slowly putting the pieces together. Yeah, he's like, oh shit, what do I do now? I mean, the correct play would be to let the attack go through and Raigeki break our tribe in the battle phase. Yeah, or, or, or ring it. I mean, we could solemn, but like, do we really need to get that greedy? Yeah, we're just going to let this ring go through. Yeah, hopefully this duo hits something good. Snatch is good, I guess. Probably wasn't the best card in his hand, but it's a good card. Oh, he's getting rid of Gravekeeper Spy. That's interesting. He might just have Double Spy. That would make sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're off to a pretty decent start so far. Ring is gone, which is good. We definitely like to see Ring gone. Yeah, we're just going to solve this. I do not want any of that nonsense. Draw threes are pretty good in chaos, as it turns out. Yeah, I mean, the defense points just, like, aren't relevant, like, just the vast, vast majority of the time. Like, it doesn't matter whether you're playing Warriors or Goat Control or whatever. The deck doesn't really matter, right? I mean, it's just it's very rare, very rare that um, the defense matters. I mean, sometimes it matters, but sometimes having whatever it is, 200 more attack matters, right? And given that we want to be attacking with a card, not defending with it, obviously the attack is going to matter more often. Uh, do we want our Sangin to die? No, I don't think so. Yeah, uh, we don't really care what he searches here. Yeah, Spy is, like, I think objectively the best choice. Obviously here it doesn't matter because we have Exiled, but he doesn't just know that we have Exiled. And he's already used Torrential, so yeah, we just, like, don't really have to worry about anything. Yeah, there's no reason to meta any... I mean, we could meta the Sinister and take his guy, but we're just... We just kill him slower that way. Yeah, let's say go. Oh, 
I mean, I don't know. For, like, Go Control, or really any deck for that matter, just, like, play however many monsters you think it's appropriate to play. Like, people don't play, like, fewer monsters in Goat Control because playing fewer monsters is better. It's more of the fact that, like, there's not a ton of monsters in Goat Control that are, like, really sick. And there's, like, a lot of spells that are. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of, like, supply and demand. Like, I've had this conversation with other people. Like, when I posted, like, Chaos Return, there are people like, oh, this deck has, like, 21 monsters, no Thunder Dragons. That's too many. Like, it doesn't really matter how many monsters any deck has, right? Like, if I'm playing some control deck with, like, 28 monsters, but, like, all 28 are broken, why wouldn't you play 28? It's the same thing with, like, um, you know, Hoban back with, like, Draft or whatever. Like, when Battle Pack 1 came out, like, the monsters were just dramatically better than the spells and traps. And he, like, posted an article saying, like, oh, you shouldn't play, like, a lot of monsters because then you'll draw a lot of monsters. I'm like, well, yeah, you want to because, like, all the monsters are insane. I mean, you could main Magic Jammer. I mean, it's not like... Like, what do you expect me to say? Like, yes, no, I don't know. I haven't tried it. Uh... Last competitive format I played in Modern Yu-Gi-Oh! was when, like, the Solomon Great structure, like, just came out, and it was just, like, by far better than everything. That was the last one I played in Modern. So that was what? How many years ago is that? Like two years ago, maybe? Yeah, I think it was about two years ago. Yeah, the turns do take forever on Dueling Network. It's funny, because I'm, like, making this dragon drop simulator specifically for goat format, but ironically enough, I think, like, current format needs a dragon drop simulator more than goat does. Because, like, it takes half the time to play, like, all the cards. How is my opponent still not done siding? All right, well, I guess while he's doing this shit, I'm going to change my webcam. Hold on. Hold on. Because someone else pointed out that I had the wrong webcam. Okay, there we go. Now we got the better quality webcam. I think the most interesting decision that last game was my decision to, uh... is is actually kind of interesting, because he played, what? He played a second pot agreed at one point off the faith, and I chose not to solemn it. And then later he gracefold, and I did choose to solemn it. Which obviously is a different situation. That was, you know, kind of the, the reason for that. But, uh... But yeah, a lot of people don't solemn draw spells, and most of the time you shouldn't. But a lot of times you should solemn draw spells. It's very dependent on the situation. Sometimes it's hard to know. Sometimes it's hard to know which you should do. Oh, okay, he's just gonna... Oh, and he's got the Sinister to go with it. Okay. Okay, big boy.
I mean, you you can say that about low monster count with like any deck. Like every deck should just not play very many monsters because then you'll draw too many monsters. I don't know, like it. Yeah, it, it again. It depends on which monsters we're talking about. Like, there's not like a correct number. Like I've seen goat control decks play as like as few as fifteen and as many as like seventeen, maybe even eighteen. I actually just don't think I really want to summon Kaiku yet. Drawing cross out changes things a bit. Huh. And he didn't flip his monster. It's like he really wanted to protect it from Mystic Level 2, and yet he didn't flip it. This is bizarre. And he sided in Dust Tornado, which is also, I don't know, I mean, Dust Tornado is not terrible, but at the same time, I don't understand the rationale either. I don't know. Now we probably do just want to go Kaiku cross out attack. Again, yeah, it depends on what your spells and your traps are. Like, Okay, you're playing 14 monsters. What are the other 26 cards, right? I mean... Like, I feel like people when they're like... I don't know. I don't know what your deck is, but I feel like when you say that, you're probably, like, cutting your monsters for, like, Trap Dust Shoot or something, which to me is, like, not the kind of card that I want to be main decking in Goat Control. Again, I, I don't know your list, so... You know, not going to judge you, but... Again, it's like, it depends on what, what cards you're... And even what monsters you're playing, too. Like, if you're playing 14 monsters, I, I mean, I assume there's no way you're playing any tributes, which is fine. I definitely think you can play zero tributes in Goat Control. But if I want to play a deck with, like, Metamorphosis and zero tributes, then I don't know, I might just play Angel Chaos at that point. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, low monster count is good in Reasoning Gate, but, like, yeah, again, it's, like, it's it's because it is. I mean, you just don't need that many monsters, right? I mean, again, it's, like, if for some reason there is a bunch of monsters that you had to play in Reasoning Gate, then you'd play a bunch of monsters, but there's not, so you don't. Like, this game isn't going too well for us so far. Sang is such a good card. Hopefully we can like bait like a cross out or a mind control somehow. What's my opponent typing about? This isn't this isn't rocket science here. He's trying to tell me Sukiyomi can't target itself. My opponent can't read. He literally copy and paste a ruling, and the ruling just says that he's wrong. 
No, I'm actually impressed. He actually copy and pasted a ruling, which is like a step that like 90% of them won't even take. Now, I mean, he happened to copy and paste a ruling that proved that I was correct. So, I mean, if anything, that's convenient. That means that I don't have to do it, right? I mean, we, we shouldn't even be mad. Yeah, let's see who this face down monster is. Oh, that was the one thing I was hoping it wouldn't be. God damn it. Night Ascent would have been fine. Dakochi would have been fine. Faith would have been fine. Tomato would have been fine. Spy, on the other hand, not fine. Uh, Caleb, I've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! on and off for, I don't know, however old the game is, almost. Like, I started playing in, like, the first year that it came out. Oh, man, this guy's just, like, going all in. Yeah, I mean, I could just let the, these guys attack my Tsukiyomi. But I also might just Mirror Force. I think we just want a Mirror Force. I mean, I technically don't have to Mirror Force, but killing two spies with the Mirror Force sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Best outs to a wall of spies? Apparently Mirror Force. <laughs> uh, apparently Mirror Force is the best out to a wall of spies. I mean, if your deck specifically has a problem with Spy and you're not playing Tribe Infecting Virus, I think that might be something to consider. I mean, the real answer is, like, probably Zaborg. Like, Zaborg is sort of, like, the least obvious, but, like, good out to a wall of Spies. Alright, opponent's got two Thunder Dragons. Uh, we're behind on life, and... Okay, that's fine. And he gets back a spy. That's kind of annoying, I guess. So he has a Thunder Dragon and a spy. Yeah, I mean, at least we, like, know his entire hand. Oh, that's kind of brutal. Do we want to Solemn here? Yeah, I don't think there's any point in Soloming. I mean, Tsukiyomi in defense worked out pretty well. I mean, it's never, like, what you're trying... It's never, like, something that, like, you're setting out to do, but sometimes it's the best option, you know? What is this guy's face-down monster? Like, a Mystic Tomato, maybe? I don't know, we're just gonna set faith. I mean, we don't really have much reason not to. We kind of want the light in our grave, just in case we draw BLS. If the faith baits a cross out, that's also fine. Oh, he's doing that. Okay. I mean, our opponent definitely has more cards than us, but his cards are all pretty crappy. You know what I mean? I mean, all of our cards are pretty crappy, too, so... Yeah, we just need to, just need to draw... Just need to draw a good one. 
like Podigree, that's that's a good example. Podigree is a good example of a card that we would like to draw. Uh, I mean, drawing second cross out isn't great, but meta is kind of what we needed. You could just tribute summon a second Thunder Dragon by tributing Sangin. I mean, I assume he's going to kill two goats here. Uh, I mean, I don't think Scapegoat or Meta are as good as they used to be. Like, the problem is, like, neither one is particularly good against the Chaos decks. Like, Three goats, three meta is like great against every deck except chaos, but chaos is like the entire meta, so you know what I mean? Like the most populous of chaos were like specifically built to like beat three goats three meta. Like, even here, it's like, okay, we have Goat's meta, but it's like, it's not that insane, you know? What is insane, though, is that we have, like, Dust Shoot plus Solemn. Now that is, that's the good stuff right there. That is the good stuff. And we have Crossouts to, like, go with our Thousand Eyes if he sets a monster. So, like, I mean, we're definitely, like, down on cards, down on life, but, like, I'm feeling good about this position, because we have Dust Sheet Meta. Or Dust Sheet Solemn, rather. Curse of Darkness! Is this real life? Is this actual real life here? Uh, what do we send back here? I mean, yeah, I guess I guess we just uh, send back the Sukiyomi. Yeah, it's awkward because like we have this solemn set while our opponent has <laughs> Curse of Darkness. But, like, I mean, our opponent plays spells, too, so... Like, the thing about Curse of Darkness, I'm not sure if our opponent realizes this, but, like, you have to, like, flip Curse of Darkness preemptively. You can't chain it to a spell and make them take a thousand. If you could chain it to a spell and make them take a thousand, I actually think it would be pretty good in burn decks. But the problem is the card doesn't work that way. Oh, he's going to snatch our guy. That's awkward. Because, like, we know he has ring. Yeah, we basically just have to let him do this. Oh, man. It sucks that his, like, last card is snatch. Because, like, problem is we saw the snatch, then he just, like, rings our guy, flips Curse of Darkness, then we can't activate any spells for the rest of the game, you know? Hopefully we should get to gain life for a while here, though. Yeah, I mean, the Faith's a good draw. And, like, we're gonna get value out of this cross-out. One of these cross-outs, at least. Okay, I guess he doesn't play 3-spy. 
Yeah, I mean, like, if he just... I don't know. Like, if he just lets us gain a 1,000 every turn, I feel like we're in a pretty good spot. I mean, he could tribute for Thunder Dragon, but he didn't do that last turn, so maybe he won't do it this turn. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get Potter Reed. I mean, I'll ask him anything before main phase one. I tell you, what a nonbo, Snatch plus Curse of Darkness. Hey, we're just all going to have to pay a thousand to activate spells. By the way, here's a thousand every turn. Yeah, I mean, so far he isn't saying anything. I just said I don't take a thousand. And so far it's been met by silence. No, he's just like not saying anything. I mean, I'm gonna pass turn. I mean, I'm just gonna like preemptively look up the ruling. He's probably just looking it up himself right now. I know there's like another one that's for traps too. Like there's a card that's just like Curse of Darkness. Except it's for traps. Yeah, I have the ruling ready in case he says anything. I just pasted the ruling, even though he's just... not saying anything. Yeah, apparently he's looking at the same page as I am. At this point, I almost just feel like just subtracting a thousand, because he could have activated at the start of my main phase, and I would have done the exact same play and taken a thousand. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess this guy's taking my word for it. I mean, obviously, you guys know how Yu-Gi-Oh works. It's weird, because, like... Um, what was I going to say? Okay, he's gonna chain ring, that's fine.
But anyways, I was gonna say, uh, where was I going with this? Oh, I was gonna say that I feel like I have a lot more, like, ruling debates with people in GOAT format than current format. And I don't know why, because, like, in my opinion, current format has, like, a lot more, like, weird stuff than GOAT format does. Like, stuff like this is incredibly straightforward, right? Like, any current format player would know that activated means activated, right? A and yet, here we are. You know what I mean? Luckily, our opponent, yeah, our opponent has used his ring. Oh, this could actually get awkward now. Because, like, if we saw him, we only get to activate one more spell. I, I might even, like, just summon Exile and attack directly. Curse of Darkness is just such a weird mechanic. Because it's like summoning exile in a way is almost like a plus one. Or attacking for a thousand is like a plus one because it means that it's one less spell he can activate. Kind of. I don't know. I, I Here I actually... Again, it's kind of a weird... A weird thing. But I think summon exile attack directly is just the right play here. Oh, that's that's kind of brutal. Are we just fucked now? Oh, okay, we are just fucked. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what can you do? Our opponent, opponent would be a lesser game, you know? With MST to hit our solemn. You know, what can you do? I mean, Curse of Darkness isn't a concern. How many spells do we even play? Not that many. I mean, we play a few, I guess. Yeah, we play 15. Play 15 post side. Yeah, I mean, as somebody exile attack directly is definitely correct. Like, we weren't beating the BLS either way. I don't know, unless we, like, set exile, then he went BLS, use effect, and then, like, we snatched his BLS. But I mean, it's not like we can just magically know our opponent's going to draw BLS, right? I mean, if any of you know how to predict when your opponent draws BLS, let me know, because I would be interested in that knowledge. Oh, this is a good hand. Oh, we like this hand. That's actually a pretty good hand. I mean, I think we just want to send back Thunder Dragon, probably. I don't know why he sided or kept in Kaiku, because that card isn't good against us. Oh, maybe I should just send back Sinister, actually. 
Yeah, probably Sinister is the right play. Yeah, I think that's send back Sinister. Oh, you can make the case for Thunder Dragon too. If his hand like wasn't Potagreed, if the Potagreed is like something else, like a Bookamoon, then I think I would send back the Thunder Dragon. Um But but yeah, obviously this is kinda kinda different, you know. He just activated okay, I was gonna whatever. I mean, I'm not gonna be a dick about this. I was like, is he just activating Potagreed before playing Thunder Dragon? But yeah. I mean the four cards that we know about aren't particularly good. I mean, Kaiku is good just because it trades with our DD Warrior Lady, but Otherwise, it's not really good. Uh, so do we want to gracefully yet? I kind of think we have to. I mean, we don't have to, but like, I don't just want to do nothing this turn. These three cards aren't that even that great either. I mean, like, Call Exile is, like, kind of a nice thing we got going, I guess. Probably should discard, like, Solemn Goats. Yeah, probably just Psalm Goats. I don't know. I maybe make the case for something else. But yeah, I was hoping we draw something like a, I don't know, like a Dakochi or a Faith. Or our own Kaiku. Something that kind of like put pressure on our opponent. But, you know. But yeah, at least we'll be able to like deal with a lot of threats for a while, so you know, we'll get to play a game of Yu-Gi-Oh, so to speak. Oh, we draw another dust shoot. I mean, we're still gonna exile. Yeah, that's fine. I mean we know we have spy, so we'll be able to send back the spy at a minimum. Yeah, this is this is fine. I mean, we got Thunder Dragon, Snatch, and Solemn. Obviously, we're sending back Spy. I don't think our opponent would expect anything else. So yeah, I mean, like, we're behind on cards, but like in terms of game state, it's basically even, right? Neither of us have a threat. We just both have a bunch of answers. Oh, wow. Sangin's such a great draw here. What the hell is a Snatch Deal and a Solemn going to do about Sangin? Now, what would be good against Sangin is Phoenix Windblast. Uh, so, my rule of thumb for, like, GOAT format has always been if you're winning less than, like... Obviously, this is, like, you know... Dueling book rated, not like you're playing like high stakes games against Chris Perovic and Dale Belito or whatever, right? So against sort of the, you know, normal field, so to speak. Less than 50%, you're bad, right? More than 70%, you're like top notch player. 60% is like you probably like know you know, you probably know a thing or two about goat format, but like you could still improve a lot. Fair. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm just gonna dust here, mostly because I want to set call, get back Sangin, and attack for a thousand. Oh shit, we got BLS. Dang, it's so good. I mean, it's not always good, but it's... It's often quite good. I mean, 70% like isn't that crazy. Like, keep in mind, even when I just, like, stream decks that I don't think are the best deck, I'm usually winning close to 70, and that's literally, like, not even, like, trying to play the best deck. Like, I'm not saying these decks are bad, it's just, like, not the deck that I would play if, like, I, I wouldn't, like, you know, if I had, like, high stakes duel, you know, for, for my soul, I wouldn't play this deck, right? That's That's all I'm trying to say here. I would not be willing to put my soul on the line with this deck. It's a good deck, but you know, it's not like wouldn't be my first choice. So, so I guess like your 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 question kind of depends on context, right? My numbers were like assuming that you are playing to the best of your abilities like 100% of the time. Like you are you are doing like maximum try hard. Obviously, if you're not doing maximum try hard, then like it's different. Oh yeah, this call's gone. Alright, so we have perfect info on our opponent's hand. Oh no, there's one card that we don't know. I mean, if there's a tournament tomorrow... Oh, it's, it's close. It's hard to say, I haven't given enough thought. I'm not saying I'd necessarily like know what I'd play, but it, it wouldn't be this deck. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> this is perhaps not the best answer. I don't know, I mean, Library FTK is probably, probably okay. Eh, I don't know, maybe not in this meta. I mean, most people are just not putting in that much effort. That's really all it comes down to. Like, realize the GOAT format meta, if people were... Like, even if you look at a game like Magic... Like, people don't become, like, millionaires playing Magic. No one becomes a millionaire playing Magic. No one ever will become a millionaire playing Magic. But just because it's played for some amount of money, people put, like, so much more effort into the game. So it's like... Yeah, the average, like, Magic player would just destroy the average GOAT player. Like, obviously, if they took time to learn the rules and, and so on and so forth, right? Oh, you're right. Call's not gone. Uh, wait. Is he... Oh, okay. He's gonna... Solomar Tsukiyomi. Uh... Uh, so let's see, we know that he has, he has his own Tsukiyomi. Yeah, we'll just say go. I mean, he's going to snatch our guy, attack us, and then probably Tsukiyomi it. I don't know. I mean, he might, he might kind of do this poorly, but my, either way, most we're going to take next turn is like 41. Oh, of course he just drew graceful. God damn it. Like our opponent just top decks a literal draw three. Yeah, I mean, Snatch is fine. I didn't want my opponent to just draw three cards, though. Hmm. 
Yeah, having solemn into having second solemn into top deck graceful is is pre is pretty good. Steph definitely pretty good. Oh, oh, the Sukiyomi's gone. I forgot we banished it. Okay, so so it's 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 not it's not as bad as I thought. It's not as bad as I thought. I was getting ready to rage because I'm like, God damn it, he's gonna Sukiyomi main phase two, and then what are we gonna do? But it's it's not that bad. No, no reason to panic here. Oh, we we draw we gain a thousand. I forgot to do that. Uh, yeah, I guess we'll try to attack for game. Don't know what else we're supposed to do. Oh, okay, he's gonna target the snatch, presumably. I was thinking, I don't know, it seems like a pretty clear choice to me. Uh, so we're obviously gonna go sinister swap. I was thinking if there's a reason to, like, if the position of sinister matters. If we normal summon sinister and swap, he could chain ring, which would be pretty sick for him. So I think we want to set sinister. Saying, let me check something. I assume he's trying to look up, like, snatch for swap. I mean, this is just, like, basic game mechanic, right? I mean... Again, I feel like a current format Yu-Gi-Oh player would know this, which is is bizarre. Okay, he has our Geki break, which, which is fine. Wow, it's kind of crazy. We're just like down to top decking. Yeah, he is controlling BLS, but if the swap resolved, I would have controlled BLS. Yeah, he, lo he looked at his grave and, and, you know, is thinking, I guess. Does he have second BLS and he's trying to think whether or not to go for game? Should I should I have the hard read on the second BLS and just not Mirror Force here? Yeah, I should probably Mirror Force here. Let's, let's be real here. And we are technically ahead on cards and ahead on life, but our opponent's used, like, what, none of his own Chaos Monsters? Oh, wow, talk about a good top deck. Talk about a good top deck. Blade Knight's, like, one of the only monsters in our deck that just kills this Kaiku. I don't know why he sided in a bunch of Kaikus against us. We're only playing one Chaos Monster, but, you know, here we are. Uh, let's see. He is used no mirror, no torrential. Do we go for game? I think the answer is yes, but just by having Blade Knight attack directly. Okay, well, he had Saku. Uh, yeah, I think we just say go. Technically, we can set Sinister, right? Yeah, there's no reason that we can't set Sinister, I think. Because if he top decks cross out, we kill him. If he top decks BLS, we still kill him. If he top decks DD Wary Lady, we kill him. So we don't have to worry about anything that banishes Sinister. Unless he has, like, DD Crazy Beast, which isn't a card that people play. Yeah, that was, that was a long match. Yeah, I think we got time for like one more. 
and we're going to call it a day. Hmm. This is not the best hand. See, this is why I don't play like three metas, because you draw hands like this. But I, I still drew this hand, even though I only play two metas. Yeah, I think this is just a draw six, say go kind of hand. I mean, is this the worst hand imaginable? No. Is it a good hand? Not particularly. Uh, this might be a good hand against, like, Angel Chaos, though, if that's what we're up against. I don't know, it's not a super great hand against Angel Chaos, but it's an acceptable hand against Angel Chaos. Oh, that's a good draw. We like Graceful. Yeah, this is a hard choice. Not because we have a bunch of good cards, but because we have a bunch of bad cards. Yeah, we're definitely getting rid of Air Knight. Probably just like Air Knight in a meta. Yeah, this hand's fine against Cast Recruiter. I mean, our opponent is, like, very lowly ranked, so... I don't know, just, like, based on that, I'm not too worried. Yeah, I'm just going to hope our opponent doesn't know how to play around Torrential. That's, that's our plan. If we just take 14, that's fine too. Oh, nope. Well. Guess I sort of sort of gave away the fact that it's gonna take the damage. Although I don't know, maybe that would have baited him into summoning another monster if he thought we just didn't have anything. I don't know, we just kill this guy, I guess. Yeah, just kill this guy and say go. Yeah. Well, maybe we get pretty good value out of our Torrential. Set another Speller Trap. Set another Speller Trap. Alright, there we go. Yeah, let's have a storm here. Maybe we could hold it. We got Dust and MST in our hand, so... Yes, we probably are playing against Angel of Chaos. We've seen Angel, Breaker, and Goat so far. So, yeah, this is probably Angel of Chaos. Which, I mean, luckily I know this matchup pretty well, mostly for being on the other side of the matchup. <laughs> I think I'm getting trolled. Okay, this guy's typed in the chat. I saw this deck on YouTube once. It's like... I mean, I'm on a... I don't know. I'm pretty sure this guy doesn't know it's me, but... People are funny sometimes. Like, I kind of want to share the chat, but then it's like... Then people just, like, will harass me and or my opponents, so I don't. Maybe it's something else. I think I'm getting memed on here. Yeah, he says, sorry, it's tough. So he has a hard decision to make, I guess. Either that or he's checking my stream to see what my hand is. Well, one or the other. Uh, 
Uh, do we want to dust here? If we're up against Angel Chaos, I don't think we want to dust yet. Yeah, like in this matchup, being on the Go Control side, it's weird. Like, Go Control, it, like, it depends on how the game develops, right? You either do like a lot of draw passing, or you like try to go ham with like Air Knight. But of course, we only play like one Air Knight. So that's not like really as much part of our game plan. I mean, I actually think like our game one matchup against Angel Chaos is actually just not very good. Like if, if both like, you know, if I'm playing good and my opponent's playing good, like we're just not, the Go Control players is not really supposed to win this matchup very much. Game one. And even game, even game two. Uh... Even game two, there's just, like, not a whole lot you can do. As the Go Control player. Especially since, like, we're only playing, like, one Air Knight. If Go Control is playing, like... I don't know. It, it, it depends on the list. Like, there's definitely some Go Control builds that are good against, uh... Angel Chaos, but... Not like this one. Like, our Warriors are just, like, not very good at all. Like, our Blade Knight is just kind of bad. Uh... I mean, here it might work. I mean, it kind of depends. Like, we're gonna try to, like, kill this guy with Blade Knight. Yeah, so, I mean, that worked out pretty well. I mean, he could meta our guy and, like, attack for 16, and, and then we're kind of, like, sort of off to the races at that point. And then if he metas and attacks to 16, then we just kind of play the, like, try not to take damage for the rest of the game, uh, game plan. Yeah, Tsukiyomi's actually fine. We don't, we don't really, we're not really concerned with that. Yeah, we could probably just dust whatever this is. <sighs> yeah, I don't really want to summon Tribe here. If we had Sinister in our hand, that might be different. Yeah, Clay Vision Chaos Recruiter is a lot different. Because, like, against Chaos Recruiter, you just kind of have to not die. Which is... I mean, not guaranteed, but is relatively easy. Whereas Angel Chaos, the goal isn't like to not die. It's mostly, it's mostly just to like create a complicated game state where your sort of like larger quantity of options allows you to like set up something like really big, like either like a game shot or like a sick air knight play or a morphing jar. I mean, of course, like morphing jar that would be like post side, but that's why I say like game one is harder because like. Morphing Jar is really good against Angel Chaos, and Scapegoat is really good against Angel Chaos. And we our Morphing Jar is in the side, and our third Goats is like also in the side. Like, here, if our opponent's life points were a little lower than 8,000, this would kind of be a different game, because obviously we can deal our opponent 46, right, with Tribe BLS. So if our opponent was just, like, slightly lower, we'd be kind of focused on setting up uh, game shots. Yeah, our opponent is very confused in the chat. He's wondering why we're not doing anything. And the answer is because, like, that's just kind of what we're supposed to do in this matchup, is not really do anything until it's, like, something meaningful. Like, we can't really do anything that meaningfully impacts the board. We can tribe and clear the goats, and, like, that's it, right? That's basically it. And right now, I don't think that really matters, you know? I mean, now it's a little more relevant because now we've drawn Faith, so, like, we don't want him to, like, Thousand Eyes our Faith. 
So now we have a bit more um, of an incentive to use Tribe. But now the issue is that we don't really have a card in our hand that we want to discard. Oh, we could discard meta. Yeah, we could go Tribe, discard meta, attack for 16. And then have Book to protect. Yeah, I think that's fine. It's debatable. You could make the case for just uh, doing more draw pass. Uh, pot's pretty good. I mean, Chaos Sorcerer would be like the, the best thing for him here. So yeah, I mean, that's the other reason to not play Tribe. I don't know, maybe you should have not played Tribe. Yeah, I mean, Potty Green to Heavy is pretty good. Yeah, so now, now we're definitely behind. I mean, we can still win, but we're definitely behind. I mean, Goats is definitely helpful. I don't know, maybe I should have discarded meta. Yeah, if I discarded Tsukiyomi, like... But of course, we know that he has Tsukiyomi. Yeah, I don't know, I actually just think that we probably shouldn't have someone tribe last turn. We probably should have done more draw pass. Oh, wow, he has... He has yeah, he has Snatch. He has Snatch BLS for game. Oh, yeah, you're right. We had book set. I mean, it's debatable whether we should book or not. Yeah, we probably should have booked. Oh, well. But, yeah, I actually think summoning tribe there is a mistake. I mean, not booking was also a mistake, but summoning tribe was, like, the bigger mistake. But, yeah, we've got, we've got like, some pretty decent side deck cards. Uh... No, I definitely wasn't I definitely wasn't bored. I definitely wasn't bored. Quite the opposite. Uh yeah, I don't think we want Solom in this matchup. Uh do we want to side out any warriors? I don't know, warriors are all fine actually. No, I mean, yeah, we, we definitely should have booked the tribe. Because, like, we knew we had Tsukiyomi. So by booking the tribe, we also don't let him summon Tsukiyomi and kill our tribe. So, yeah, we definitely should have booked the tribe. Yeah, I think of what else we're siding out here. Hmm. I don't know, Dust maybe. This is not like the kind of matchup where we need like a ton of that effect. Yeah, I might be getting a little greedy on lights, but we'll try this. But yeah, uh, the, the thing with this matchup is like, I don't know, the problem with like summoning tribe, or really summoning anything for that matter is, like, Angel Chaos gets its advantage by dealing with your threats efficiently, so if you just like never really play a threat, then they just kind of sit there and do nothing until they eventually kill you. Yeah, apparently this guy's like, watching my, I mean he says, He's watching my stream, but not watching my stream. Uh... 
I mean, luckily we have a pretty good going first hand. Against Angel Chaos or anything for that matter. Uh, yeah, I think we want to ring here. With this hand, this matchup versus this play, I think we just want to ring. This might be, like, kind of one of the games where we sort of try to, like, gain an early advantage and, um... Get an early advantage and uh, sort of try to push it. You know, attack him with some guys. I also, I think I forgot to side in a Zura Priest, didn't I? That's pretty important. Oh, well, we're just like handicapping ourselves this game. Oh, getting rid of a Chaos Sorcerer is pretty good. Something Breaker's all is pretty good. Because, like, even if our Breaker hits Goats, you know, we just get to, like, kill two Goats right off the bat. And yeah, this is going to be an interesting game, only because, like, you know, life points have started so low. Because, like, double duo, double ring. So yeah, it's like, if our opponent, I mean, he has light in the dark, so it's like, if he just, like, draws Belas, it's just like, oh, we're just dead. Yeah, I just probably want to dust whatever this is. It might just be like a random dead card to bait dust. Oh no, it's goats. That's that's pretty good. Oh, I think Graceful is a pretty good draw. I definitely can't complain about that. Oh yeah, like a bunch of good draws. Oh yeah, this is this is sick actually. We just have to think of like which card are we keeping. I think we're definitely keeping this one. We're probably getting rid of one of these. Uh... Uh... Maybe we don't need this. I don't know. I don't... Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're gonna, like, get anything out of these metas, right? What the hell is meta gonna do this game? By the time we get to use meta, we're just going to be dead. Uh, I mean, meta would have been pretty good with Sinister, but, you know, we can't just know that we're going to draw Sinister. I mean, any Chaos Monster would be good for him. He acts like, oh, I, you know, I don't know what I can draw. It's like, oh, any Chaos Monster. I mean, of course, we can draw a Chaos Monster, too. Oh my god, just... Just, just play, man.
My opponent's trying to like tell me how good he is. Like I'm I'm sure he's good, but I'd rather just play the game, you know? It's like I'd, I'd rather just play the game. I mean, if this set is like, I don't know, nothing, then I think we just win. Or maybe we don't, who knows. I mean, there's no way our opponent ever has Mirror Torrential set here, right? Like, there's just absolutely zero chance. And he's getting back heavy, that makes the decision even easier. Oh, okay. Uh, Alright, so we haven't summoned yet, which is pretty important. Uh, so our opponent's gonna heavy. I mean, I'm just gonna, even though we know he has heavy, I think we're just gonna set goats. The worst thing you could do is like heavy snatch, but if he goes heavy snatch, then we just MST the snatch and win. I mean, I guess the absolute worst thing you could do would go heavy, pot agreed into like snatch plus, like snatch. I don't know. I don't know. Snatch plus something else. I mean, you could Tsukiyomi our guy if we really want to play around Snatch. Let's see, if we Tsukiyomi our guy, he could go heavy. And then, if he has skilled Dark Magician, or Kaiku if he plays that, then that could attack over our set Air Knight. DD Warrior Lady's gone, so we don't have to worry about that attacking over our set Air Knight. Oh yeah, that's, that's true. He could get something good off... Yeah, he could have, like, Heavy Snatch Book. That would be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the problem is, is... I don't know, I guess you're probably right, yeah. We probably do just want to play around Snatch. And by Tsukiyomi being our guy, we kind of play around Chaos Sorcerer. Well, not really, because he can just go Heavy... Heavy attack. But then our guy's in the grave. Yeah, you're probably right. It'll suck if, like, this play makes us lose somehow. But I don't think it really can. Okay, now I'm going to side in Azura and not be a moron. Problem is, like, all of our monsters are pretty good. What do we even side out? Because literally, like, I mean, I think we probably should go to 17 monsters in this matchup. Because, like, literally all of our monsters are good. I mean, we could side out a warrior, but then our rota kind of sucks. Yeah, I mean, especially going second, we definitely want to have the rota package. I mean, a good play, by definition, is just a play that maximizes your probability of winning. I mean, you can't be punished by the correct play. You can just get unlucky for doing the correct play. Oh no, Morphing Jar is really good against Angel Chaos. There's zero chance we're taking that out. Zero chance. I mean, we could take a pre or a call out, but that just that just feels so bad. I almost want to go to forty one and just bring in Azura, but that's not legal. No, I mean we kind of want Saku too. That's the thing. Like, there's a lot of important things we need to Saku. <sighs> What's the worst card in our deck here?
I mean, Morphing Charge is good because, like, again, there's a lot of times, like, the Angel Chaos can't really commit their cards to the field in a good way. I mean, being the Angel Chaos player, I'd always have to worry about Morphing Jar. Yeah, I mean, Kaiku isn't super great. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. It depends. Like, it depends on his list, too. Like, if he's playing Skills Dark Magician, Kaiku isn't nearly as good. But yeah, you're probably right. Like, Kaiku's probably, like, the worst card in our 40 card deck. This is a pretty good hand against Angel Chaos, actually. I mean, particularly Double Crossout. Crossout's really... I mean, Crossout's good against a lot of decks. But it's, like, better against Angel Chaos than it is against, like, some other Chaos decks. Because, like... Like, they can't discard Thunder Dragon. Their cards actually have to, like, naturally go to the grave. You know. Oh, okay. He has Sangin, so we just don't get to cross out. Okay, that's that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, corporate environment's different. I mean, it's, it's also kind of like a vague example. Because, like, sometimes losing money isn't a bad thing. Like, startups will lose money for, like, a decade and then just become, like, a trillion-dollar company. So, um... And depending on what business you're in, there's a lot you can't control. Like, part of the reason that, like... I don't like investing in oil companies isn't because that I think that like oh you know oil is bad and like solar is the future but just because like when you invest in an oil company what you're really investing in is the price of oil which the company has no control over like despite what conspiracy theories you might hear Exxon has no control over the price of oil almost zero so it's like if they're losing money it like I mean, yes, there maybe are some things they could do better, but, like, they have no control over the price of oil. It's interesting. He cited in Kaiku against me. Or he mains it. Like, I think some Angel Chaos decks just, like, main Kaiku now. Yeah, I know who Patrick Sullivan is, but I don't know anything about Wing Shards. Oh man, Andy has book. As long as our Sinister doesn't get banished somehow, I think I'll, I'll be fine here. Yeah, this is an awkward game. Awkward game. Uh, I think they actually just want to book his Sinister. Yeah, we book his Sinister, cross it out, Kaiku kills our guy. Getting rid of Sinister is definitely, definitely a big deal.
Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, Finn. That card just sounds like a strictly better version of Force of Will. Like, hey, what if Force of Will just didn't require you to have a fucking blue card? It's actually unreal, because, like, Kaiku is just so bad against our deck, but, like, we just have BLS and Sinister, which is just the only two cards in our deck that it's good against. It's very frustrating. Yeah, and if our opponent just has like another book, like game's basically over. Uh I might just like take DD Warrior Lady and say go, or take Kaiku and say go. Well, you could have Sukiomi. This is frustrating. Sukiomi is our guy. And then we take 15. Man. Yeah, probably a correct place to take Kaiku attack DD Warrior Lady. If there's some guarantee that he didn't have Sukiomi, then I think you can make the case for not attacking. But yeah, I mean, we're just still, like, super behind. Mainly because of our life points. Like, if we had 3,000 more life points, I would feel a lot better about this game. Problem is, if he just goes, like, summon monster attack for, like, the next three turns, yeah, it's like, what are we supposed to do about this? No, yeah, I mean, I mean banishing is fine, like, because, again, we, we want him to have two dark snow light. Okay, this is this is a good draw. I, again, the reason why is because I just immediately lose to Tsukiyomi. Like, if I take DD Warrior Lady and pass, or take Kaiku and pass, he just plays Tsukiyomi and the game's over. So, he didn't have cross out for faith, so he probably just doesn't have cross out. So yeah, if he doesn't do anything productive this turn, I'll feel a little better. Suki only be pretty good for us ourselves, actually. Suki is pretty good on both sides of the matchup. It's good for him against us, and it's good for us against him. It's definitely one of like the more important cards. But yeah, I just don't see how we're gonna win this game unless our opponent plays exceptionally bad. Cause like he already banished a bunch of our shit. Even if we play BLS, like. You know, we could just get ringed for game. One of our books is already gone. So it's just, I don't know, it's just not a fun time, you know what I mean?
Hopefully this Blade Knight does something good. Okay, yeah, this is good, actually. This is perfect. This is perfect because, like, we absolutely want this ring to be gone. This is, like, one of the... One of, like, the only ways that we can win is our opponent just uses ring there. I think it's, I don't know, Fit. I think it's more the opposite. I think I'd go to a lot of people play bad decks just because they like it. And, like, in Magic, again, like, at, like, obviously there's Magic players. The difference, the difference to me is, like, if a Magic player is a casual player, they will just admit that they're casual. Whereas, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! players will say, like, oh, I'm playing to win, I take this game super seriously. And then they'll just, like, not act like it. Why not cross out heavy there? Why would I cross out heavy there? What's that supposed to do? I mean, we could just cross out and not summon Blade Knight. But I mean, cross out heavy... The problem with doing cross out heavy is it basically is turning our Blade Knight into a dead card for the rest of the game. Because presumably when we heavy, we're going to chain goats. And it's like, what the hell is Blade Knight going to do? Our opponent could just summon Air Knight and win here, but like most Angel Chaos decks don't man or side Air Knight anymore, so I'm not too worried about that. Our opponent's also got three of his lights banished. How sick is that? Yeah, I guess you're right. It's not really like a Yu-Gi-Oh format that's like specifically for casual people. See, Finn, I think I think maybe we are disagreeing on like the facts slightly. See, I think like you're like looking at it from the perspective of a Yu-Gi-Oh player, where you're like, oh, you know, the most popular decks must be the best decks and everything else must be tier 2. It's usually, like, more the opposite. You know what I'm saying? So, like, in Magic, people won't play top 3 decks because they correctly recognize that, like, the 3 most popular decks probably aren't the best choice. Right? In a lot of formats. And it depends. Like, if I understand, like, standard's really bad, and sometimes, like, a deck in standard is just, like, broken. But in actual diverse formats, like, I don't know, modern, I guess, or legacy, like, usually... I mean, it's it depends. It, it really depends. But it's... I w Again, I, w I would talk to the players, because we're, like, we're basically arguing a hypothetical situation. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, obviously people disagree on what the correct meta call is. People are allowed to disagree. Oh, this graceful sucks for us. So now he just gets to throw light in his grave. Which, I don't know, maybe isn't the end of the world, but it could be. Again, it's like, it's, it, we're basically arguing, like, a, a very vague hypothetical situation. Like, among, like, again, I think maybe... Like, the difference here is, like, when we're talking about Magic players, I'm thinking of Pro Tour players. Maybe you're thinking of something else. Like, among Pro Tour players, they, like, are absolutely far, like, better at card games than Yu-Gi-Oh! players are, right? Like, that's, that's, that's just a fact. I mean, you, know, you might not agree that it's a fact, but it's a fact. So if, so if fucking, I don't know... Patrick Chapin, Lewis Scott Vargas, you know, you know, Paulo Victor, Domodoros, if someone like them is playing, like, the sixth most popular deck, they probably have a pretty good reason. Well, 
I mean, I think there's still magic players who play magic. I don't know. I haven't kept up magic for a while, but... But yeah, again, I'm I'm talking about Pro Tour players. Pro Tour Magic players definitely like understand they understand card games on a much deeper level than Yu-Gi-Oh players do. And that goes for myself too. Like if I were to just like start playing Magic again tomorrow, it would probably take forever forever for me to qualify for a Pro Tour. It would definitely take like at least 2 years. Yeah, it just sucks. Like, our opponent had, like, his one Kaiku, and we drew, like, Sinister BLS Premature Burial. This blows. What we need to draw is, like, Graceful Charity into some very good cards. Not even Podigreed. We need Graceful Charity. I mean, Ivan, what do you define as tier 2? In my opinion, I'm playing a tier 2 GOAT deck right now. Like, in terms of popularity. Because, like, part of these, like, tier discussions, I think, has to do with people don't, like, people don't agree on what tiers are. I associate tiers with popularity. Not with, like, how good a deck is. You know what I'm saying? So... I would consider my deck a tier 2 deck in terms of popularity. Probably also tier 2 in terms of like how good it is. Or like tier 1.5 in terms of how good it is. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right, David. Like, they... Again, like, Magic players test, like, way better than Yu-Gi-Oh players do. All right, well, my opponent just decided to just not play around Mirror Force this game, so finally I drew it. I don't know. Are we going to win this game somehow? It would be amazing if we found a way to win this game. Problem here is, like, okay, we killed both of our opponent's guys, but now he can just activate Scapegoat. So it's like, if we want to kill him, we need a way to, like, kill through Scapegoat. I mean, you could just hope he didn't draw it, but he's seen 24 cards in his deck at this point. Yeah, he's got three lights, three lights, or sorry, three darks, one light. Oh my god, I hate my life. Yeah, I mean, this is, again, one of these situations where we just kind of hope that the game goes draw pass for a while. Yeah, playing Chaos Sorcerer here actually makes sense. We might just have to Torrential. Yeah, we... <sighs> the problem is if we Snatch, he can Book. He's used one Book, but he runs three, or he should be running three. Oh, <sighs> yeah, we're just going to Torrential. Oh, 
Uh, that's not what I wanted to see. Uh, that's not what I wanted to see either. Uh, okay, it's just gonna kill me. Alright, that's fair. Yeah. I don't know. I probably could have played this game better. Like, both game one and, and game three, I could have played better. Yeah, I, don't know. I, think I'll, I think I'll close out by playing a one match Thunder Dragon Chaos. Because that's pretty quick. And then we'll, uh. Yeah, we'll show off the new dueling simulator. And we're going to call it a night. Alright, my opponent says he has to use the bathroom. I don't know, I guess we'll just go Thunder Dragon Graceful. Oh, we have double Knight Assailant. I didn't even see that. This is Graceful is just going to go like full meme. Yeah, we're just gonna go full meme here. How many cards do we have? Nine. That's kind of a lot. Uh, I don't really want to discard, so I'll just say go. The old set two cross outs, turn one. Best plan goat format. I could still lose. Obviously, if our opponent's playing like some sort of combo deck, we can definitely lose to that. Even if our opponent's playing like a fair deck, we can we can still lose. Like to be fair, like our hand isn't like our hand doesn't have that many good cards. Like okay, we have two Thunder Dragons, which don't really do anything. We have two Night Assailants, which like I don't know, it's just Night Assailant. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, do we want our guy in attack or defense? Yeah, I mean, the only way to get punished for, like, putting our guy in attack, really, is if he has, like, exactly a Zura Priest. I don't know, I just... Not a lot of people are playing a Zura Priest right now. Plus, like, this play gives him the least amount of time to sort of unfuck himself, so to speak. I mean, our opponent did start Potty Greed. The main problem is he went Potty Greed into, like, nothing. Which, again, it's like, opening Trinity doesn't matter if, like, your follow-up is nothing, right? I mean, oh, and he does have a Zero Priest. It's so weird, because it's like, when I look at top deck lists, like, almost no one plays a Zero Priest. But yet, every time I go for the Spy Play, my opponent has a Zero Priest, like, every time, I swear. So, I don't know. 
Clearly, clearly I'm just bad. That's that's probably it's probably what's going on here. I'm just bad. I guess fine, we didn't thin out our deck and attack our opponent for twenty four. You know what I mean? It's like can't can't really complain. But it does seem like every time I go for the spy play, my opponent just always has a zero priest. I mean, even if my opponent is stream sniping me, it's not like that gives him the ability to magically have a Zura Priest, you know? It's just... Like, what can you do? Because, like, in theory at least, you know, in the current meta, like, not a lot of decks should be maining a Zura Priest. Like, Chaos Recruiter, okay, I'd main a Zura Priest in that. Goat Control, maybe you could main one. And, like, that's really about it. Like, occasionally you'll see, like, a Thunder Dragon Chaos deck play a Zero Priest, but I don't think it's, it's like, a good choice in that deck. Not main deck. Like, side deck, sure. Oh, okay, he probably is just playing Goat Control with a main deck of Zero Priest. Both have the same sleeves. I should probably change my sleeves. Oh, Phoenix Windblast. That, that's a good card. We like we like that. Uh, do we want to go for damage? Uh, he could snatch deal. Like, probably see some DD Warrior Lady can snatch, and then it's like, then what? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'll just say go. I mean, we don't have to set Wing Blast yet. I Maybe mean, we could, but like, I don't think our opponent's just going to kill us. That's what I'm all worried about at this point. If our opponent doesn't, like, somehow deal us 7,000 out of nowhere, we're fine. Oh, that's a pretty good card. Oh, uh, if he just, like, goes, like, into Mobius or something, that would suck. Yeah, this could just be Monarchs. Ugh. Yeah, Monarchs could be kind of a rough matchup. Oh, okay, it's just the Stalos. He played, like, the one that we don't care about. Uh... Oh, of course he just hits our best card. <laughs> like, obviously out of our hand of two Thunder Dragons and a Knight Assailant, he hits the Snatch Steal. Oh my god. We're off to a great start. <laughs> We're off to a great start. Man, like literally the snatch is like the only card in my hand that I cared about. Anything else would have been fine. Uh, 
Ugh, man. Yeah, this is this is kind of a weird spot for our opponent. I mean, I'd say he's like overall, I'd say he's probably ahead. I mean, if like. He doesn't deal with our faith, and I think we're ahead, but assuming he has some way to deal with our faith, and I think he's ahead. Yeah, he's like so confused about what our back rows are. Because we set two to like avoid. We set two to avoid discarding, and we just haven't played them. I mean, maybe we could have just set one and, like, discarded the Thunder Dragon instead or something. But, I mean, I think just setting double cross out was fine. I figured we probably would have gotten to use one by now, but, you know. Uh. Is that fine? Yeah, I think I'm going to say sure. Oh man, he has Azura into cross out. He really plays no faith. He's just on like the monarch deck with like no sets. Oh, he's probably just playing Chris's list. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna take all the damage here. Uh, so we Wing Blast, and then we have 36 plus game, yeah. Oh, he has goats, okay. Man, he says, like, because I assumed it was Decree and we would, like, probably just win. But instead he has Goats. And we can't Torrential here because his thing is Chain Link 2. Oh, this is just unreal. Like, we drew Double Cross out against, like, the deck that's dead against. We can't use our Torrential. I mean, we can summon a monster in Torrential, but, like, that doesn't really accomplish anything. Yeah, if I feel like if I knew the matchup from the first turn, I could have played this a lot better. But it's like, by the time I figured out what we were up against, it was kind of too late. Having the cross out was really sick too. Cause we, we didn't torrential because we like wanted to resolve our faith. And then he was like, oh, I just have cross out. It's like Yeah.
Yeah, we basically just have to hope that he hits our Thunder Dragon with the Thistalos, then we kill him. Okay, well, he just hit the one card that kills us. So yeah, we don't have much on our side for this matchup, which is kind of... I actually think we probably just don't side anything. I mean, I'm pretty sure we take out cross-outs. Then the problem is, like, we don't want to bring in traps because he plays Decree. I mean, cross-out for brain control probably is a thing. I don't know, maybe we should do something like this. Brain control's like a little weird, but like we can crash a monarch into another monarch, which is kind of good. Um Yeah, it's just it's just not like not a good matchup for us. I mean it's not like an awful matchup, but it's definitely not a good matchup. I mean, Azura, like, isn't very good against our deck. Azura is probably, like, the worst card in his deck against us, actually. Um, like, Azura wasn't the issue, obviously. Oh, oh, you're saying our Azura, right. Yeah, you're right. Azura's basically in our side for this deck. Yeah, good point, good point. Spy kind of sucks against him. Spy is actually terrible against him. Spy does, like, almost nothing. But we saw that game how Spy worked out. Yeah, it, it, it's awkward, because, like... I mean, we're doing this at a minimum. We have, like, a bunch of cards to side out, not really that many great cards to side in. Yeah, we're probably just doing this. Like, we're just going to edit two spies, and they just kind of suck balls. <laughs> like, I think that's what we're doing here. Uh, does Cyberstein do anything? I'm trying to think if Cyberstein does anything. Probably, I mean, it could do something, but I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah, Stein's probably not to play. We could bring in our own Mobius. Because, like, it's good with brain control. And it hits set Decree. Although we don't care about Decree that much. Especially when we're going first. Maybe going second we bring in Mobius. Because, like, we only play seven traps. And two of them, we kind of know, we'll be able to activate before he Decrees. Yeah, well, let's try this. I mean, I think just the fact that we know the matchup now will allow us to, like, plan a little better. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we can just ride Azura to victory this game. I don't think that's necessarily a foolproof plan, but you never know. It is a plan, at least. Yeah, we got Snatch and Brain Control. We're just probably on the, like, pseudo-aggro plan. Yeah, I mean, Azura deals with goats, and we got Snatch and Brain. Yeah, this could work. If he hits my Azura, that'll be kind of mad. 
Oh, I hit like the next best thing. Man, it's like people in like hitting our snatch steal. Just like every time. They just, they just hit the goods. Of course, we didn't have Sanga to set turn one to bait Soul Exchange. Now he's probably going to like have cross out. Eh, maybe not. Who knows? He doesn't necessarily have cross out. If he does have cross out, it would kind of suck, though. Alright. Well, the Sanga's going through, which is definitely... Definitely what we want to see. I mean, Azura is good because they can't brain control it or soul exchange it. That's why Azura is good. Man, it sucks, but I'm probably just going to have to card destruction. Because, like, our hand is just, like, just a pile of garbage. Yeah, I think we just go Wing Blast, discard Sinister... Target whatever the hell this is. I mean, I don't like using card destruction here, but... Yeah, we just like card destruction into four more bad cards. I don't... Know why he sided in mid shield Gardner against us? So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess the monster's probably another mid shield Gardner. Maybe? I, I have no idea. Sinister Torrential is a pretty good combo against Monarchs, like, if they don't have Cross Out. Problem is we just let them draw a bunch of cards, so, like, obviously the odds of them having Cross Out, like, go up. Oh, or now, I mean, we can just, you know, summon Serpent and just Torrential Field. That's the safe play. Yeah, it's plus one, so... Yeah, it just has a I have no idea why he brought in mid shield Gardner against us, but <laughs> you know what I mean. Like... I Finn, I don't play Sukiyomi. Oh wait, no, I do. Yeah, you're right. I forgot I was playing Sukiyomi. But even then, I mean, we're going to get a lot of value out of the Sinister, right? It's just kind of like... E e like, either way, like, Tsukiyobi and Sinister are both, like, very good cards. It's just a question of which one's going to be better. Okay, good. It's Royal Decree. Uh, do we need to set anything else? I mean, Wing Blast could be good, but I don't really want to get heavied. Uh, I don't know. Let's say go, I guess. I mean, life points are bad even. I, like I said, I think this is, I don't know. I think we're trying to deal damage this game. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, he's gonna attack first. Luckily our opponent's like... Luckily for him, at least. He's not bad. He's actually like attacking with the correct things in the correct order.
I still don't understand why he sided in a bunch of mid shield gardeners. Perhaps I never will understand. Oh, Chaos Sorcerer, that's exactly what we wanted. Ah, uh, so we could have Decree now. Could have another Decree. So yeah, I think we want to... I mean, I definitely want to set MST, and I think we probably want to set Wing Blast too. I mean, if this card's a heavy, we just get blown the fuck out, but... But yeah, I mean, the plan is, I don't know, we like Wing Blast something, he chains Decree, we chain MST, and then we like kind of get him good. Oh, uh, that's frustrating. Why would he set brain control? That's so weird. Yeah, we're just like getting owned by these brain controls. I mean, if he doesn't have Mobius, I don't really think I care. Chaining Wing Blast on Heavy to make them redraw it isn't a thing. That, like, doesn't work. I think I'm just going to Wing Blast the Sorcerer. That has to be good, right? Yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to Wing Blast the Sorcerer. I mean, Sorcerer's a good draw. I mean, he's got a plus one either way, unless he just, like, mind games us and, like, doesn't have a monarch. I mean, I guess that's possible, but... I don't think our opponent's, like, good enough to get us that way. I don't know, I mean, two brain controls are gone. Like, what more can he really do? Is this guy watching the stream? He just knows we have MST set, and he's activating goats. I don't know, maybe he has a reason for this. Maybe he's like... This is weird. It's almost like he's saying, Hey, I want you to summon Sorcerer, banish a goat, summon a Sinister, and, and attack too. And we can just summon Sinister and attack, that's one option. What's the worst that he can do? Okay, so we summon Sinister and attack a goat. He goes Soul Exchange, summon Mobius, we chain ring. Right? That's like the absolute worst case scenario. He could just summon a monster and attack our Sinister and we ring that. I don't know. I mean, I don't see the downside to doing this play, so we're going to see how it works out. If we get owned somehow, then I'll learn something, because I haven't played this matchup a lot. I've actually mostly played it from the other side. Uh, so now we have Book. Book's a very good card. Man, if he had, like, slightly fewer life points, like, if he was at 46... We could try to set up a turn where we, like, poke for 23 a Sorcerer and then ring our guy for game. I don't know. Attacking Goat seems fine. Oh, Dust Shoot's good. Dust Shoot is very good. Dust Shoot is like almost like the best card we could draw right now.
Oh, he did have a Monarch, but it was a Borg, so he's gonna, like, tribute our Chaos Sorcerer for a set of Borg. And he has Heavy, too. He actually just has, like, the full meme here. This is actually a pretty decent hand against us. And obviously now he knows he knows that we know that he has heavy, so I feel like, you know, sometimes maybe that makes him play it faster. I don't know, we'll see what he does. I feel like he can't just pass turn here. He has to do something. Yeah, I mean he has to do something. So, yeah, I mean, we'll just, yeah, we're just going to ring his goat. I mean, we could ring our Sinister, but I don't see a reason to. It's interesting, because he can brain our Sinister and meta it. I mean, I don't think he has a reason to, but he could do it. The interesting thing to know is, like, he has brain and meta. We can book one, but we obviously can't, like... We obviously can't book both. So if he goes Sorcerer Attacks, he goes Goats, he goes Brain. If we let the Brain resolve, then he metas the Sorcerer. If we don't let the brain resolve, then he metas the goat. It actually might just be optimal to heavy here. MSD can target things that are flagged for destruction, Jason. That is true in both current format and goat format. But yeah, I think we might want to actually heavy here just to like force... Yeah, I think it's just correct to heavy here because we want to force him to use goats so that we can start attacking them. It's a very strange play to think that, like, oh, you know he has goats and you're just going to heavy anyways. It's like, yeah, we want to, because if we don't heavy, he can just take three for a while. So it's like we want to we wanna get all these goats off the field so he doesn't have a meta target. So it's like, if we top deck like a random monster, I don't know, say we top deck like a DD Warrior Lady. The next turn we can summon Warrior Lady, clear all the goats, meta's probably dead, then we have Book for the Brain, and then hopefully, you know, we, we're ahead at that point. That's sort of, that's sort of the theory at least. I guess we could normal summon Night Assailant. That's yeah, that's definitely an option. But I'd probably rather just set it. But yeah, this is a weird game. It, this is I think this is like a very even game because we both have a lot of info. He he knows that we have Sorcerer. Obviously, he knows we have Sinister. You know, we know that he has Brain and Meta. So, you know, roughly same number of cards, roughly same number of life points, and we both have, you know, some info on the other person's holdings. Vestalis would be brutal. Anything else, I'm fine. Yeah, we want, to, we want to save the book for the brain. That's going to be the important card this game. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of good, too. But mostly for the reason that it forces us to use our book. 
Oh, hold on. Because if we book Grand Marg... I mean, I guess we can always attack his guy, right? Yeah, we'll probably just target Grand Marg. Because if we target a Sinister, he attacks over the Sinister. Which, I don't know, could be a good thing. If we draw, like, Graceful, then we will wish that we booked our Sinister. I'm trying to think, is this deck play Mirror and Torrential? Not usually, I think. It, yeah, this deck isn't supposed to play Mirror and Torrential. Oh, we know one's Brain. So let's see, we can summon Sorcerer. Yeah, I mean, I think the play is uh, just summon Sorcerer, attack two guys. And then probably tribute our Sinister for Thunder Dragon main phase 2. I mean, this deck could play Book, I guess. That's a thing. So yeah, I mean he can he can brain sorcerer and banish itself, but then we have a thunder dragon that we get to attack him with. So yeah, like if he top decks a monarch, I think we just lose. But if he doesn't, then I think we're in decent shape. Use one meta. I mean, brain meta would be good too. You could do like brain. Yeah, brain creature swap doesn't really accomplish anything. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like he needs a meta or a tribute monster. Oh, that's that's actually. Oh my god, it's such an insane draw. What is he even thinking about? He says thinking like like he has a. Oh, he's thinking about that. Whether you use the brain or the swap. I mean, I think we just have to get back Snatch Deal, right? I mean, we can get back Card Destruction. Uh, it's either Card Destruction or Snatch Deal. So if we Snatch his guy and attack, all he needs is, like, Brain Control plus a random monster. Well, no, because you can Snatch Set Sinister, and then he can't really do a whole lot. I mean, he can Brain the guy back and then Banish itself. So let's see, if we attack him, he goes to 25, gains 1,000, goes to 35. This is actually pretty close. Yeah, we can Snatch, Set Sinister. Oh, he could go Brain. 
Attack the Sinister, should beat main phase two. If he has is if he has a tribute. I mean, if we get card destruction, we'll basically be seeing four new cards. But I don't know how much that matters. Yeah, we probably just want Snatch. I mean, it's it's close. Oh shit, now we just have BLS. That's the other reason to get Snatch, is you might just top deck a BLS and win the game. And I don't think this deck plays book, right? Maybe if he does, he probably sides it out. What is he thinking about? Uh, yeah, I wish I knew this matchup a little better. I really wish I knew this matchup a little better. And yeah, again, I don't think this deck plays Mirror Torrential, so... Alright, that's this game. <sighs> so yeah, I mean, I think I'm getting the hang of things more a little. It is weird because we didn't see any blowbacks in game one or game two, and I feel like blowback is supposed to be like one of the main cards for him. Like that's supposed to be one of his best cards in the matchup. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe we can side, side in Mobius. Yeah, I think siding in Mobius wouldn't be that terrible, actually. Because he plays, like, Decree. Andy was willing to, like, set random spells like Brain Control. I don't like Spy, but ironically enough, siding in Mobius kind of makes Spy better. I don't know. Maybe let's go full degen. Bring out the Spies for Cyber Sign and Mobius. Not sure if it's good, but like, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, we're going to try it and see if it works. Maybe we'll just draw Cyberstein set. Yeah, maybe we're going to draw Stein dead and wish we didn't side it in. That's that's possibility. But yeah, I feel like after playing two games, I I mean I think like the matchup is hard, but I don't think the decisions are hard. Like his deck like this kind of deck is pretty linear. Like it, it just it just kinda only does one thing, but it does it well. So we're just gonna try to counter that one thing, you know? Obviously, he opened like pretty good hands here. Oh, I was also considering siding out Heavy Storm. It's I don't know. It's kind of probably not probably not nearly bad enough to side out, but I don't think it's like super great either. It's also better when we're going second.
Uh, so we're gonna side a or, yeah, we're gonna set a monster. Just a question of which one. Yeah, probably Faith. Two spells or traps. I mean, I, don't, I just don't think he plays Mobius. And if he hasn't decided, I don't think he sided it in. I mean, I assume this set monster is like Midshield Gardner. Maybe Midshield Gardner was just like a mind game, and now it, he brought in like the Kochis or something. I don't know. It's possible. Okay. What does Sangit even search? Sinister, exactly? Yeah, I guess Sinister, or an, or Midshield Garden, I guess. Or Spear Reaper, apparently. Uh... Oh, he actually let that go through. I was, like, planning on it getting decreed. Maybe I'm just bad for Wing Blasting there. Yeah, maybe I should have, like, waited to the end phase. If Dushu goes through, you know. Ugh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I don't even know if I want to get rid of the Spirit Reaper. Probably just Grand Marg. Like, one of the main ways that I think that our deck can beat his deck is if his deck, like, doesn't have the right ratio of, like, tribute monsters to, you know, brain control, soul exchange effects. So yeah, obviously we really hope he discards the Thunder Dragon here. But if he doesn't, it's not really the end of the world. Alright, whatever. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate that he just discarded the best card in our hand, but, you know, what, what can you do?
Or he's just passing, that's fine. He probably just has like goats, you know. Or he takes 23, that'd be great. Uh, okay, so he's doing that, so he gets to heavy, and then we get to chain book. Okay, that's fair. This might be a game that involves a lot of draw passing. We'll have to see. I also think one thing that kind of helps us in this matchup is uh, the fact that we play the full four Chaos Monsters instead of most people who just play three. Because, like, Reaper hitting the Belas for a deck that plays, like, three Chaos Monsters would be a lot, like, bigger of a deal. But here, it's like we still know that we have two Chaos Sorcerers left in our deck. And our opponent doesn't really set monsters, so Chaos Sorcerer is, like, almost as good as a Belas in this matchup. <sighs> Well, he is correctly doing, even though he uh, knows that we have two Thunder Dragons. I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. That's just the correct play here for him. It's very weird. I wonder if... I, I know I'm like being paranoid... But I wonder if our opponent's watching the stream just because he's taken very long and like literally any time, every single time he's had to discard something from our hands, he's hit the best card. Like like all three games, every single time he hit the best card in our hand, anytime he had a random discard. And like one time he like rolled a dice and like, yeah, every time he's rolled dice, he has like, like rolled a three and then he picks like the fourth card in our hand. Like his... Picks haven't correlated with, like, the die rolls at all. It's, I don't know, maybe I'm being paranoid, but to me it's very suspicious that he hits the best card in our hand all three games, rolls a die, but, like, doesn't pick anything having to do with that, and, like, you know, he's been kind of taking a while. I don't know. You guys in chat let me know. I mean... This is why a stream is fun, guys, because we, we, we debate over whether we're getting sniped or not, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's just kind of what it's all about. So, yeah, you, you guys let me know what you think. I'm, I, 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 I'm feeling a little suspicious. I'm feeling a little suspicious. I'm going to, like, consider going back it and watching it, but literally every time he's had a random discard, he's hit the best card in our hands. Oh, and our opponent just drew Soul Exchange and a Monarch, apparently. Uh, yeah, we'll book and then try to attack over his guy. I mean, I'm not I'm not crying. Like I don't care about these matches, right? Like not in any like meaningful way. But again, the fact that he hits the best card in our hand every time and his die rolls don't like seem to have any relevance to me is to me is it's a little suspicious. Like keep in mind, we've like literally already 
you know, found one example of our of our opponent watching our stream. So it's not like this never happens. Right? It's not like this never happens. Hey, watch. He's going to play around duo every single turn, right? He's going to set his feather trap, say go. Yeah, he literally he literally did this twice in a row. He literally did this twice in a row with the die where he like rolls a die and then goes, "Oh yeah, I'm just like picking a different card." And again, like every single time he's had a random discard, he's hit the best card in our hand. So again, it's like, normally, I wouldn't say anything, but like, it's one of those things where it's like, all of these things together collectively makes me go, huh, something, something fishy's going on here. Something fishy could be going on here, at least. Ugh. I mean, I guess we're gonna graceful. See what we draw. Probably just get rid of heavy card destruction. What could this set be? It could be another Spirit Reaper, which would be annoying but not a big deal. Uh, it could be mid shield Gardna, which, again, not really a big deal. Yeah, there's no point really attacking into the set unless it's like Dakochi, which we have no reason to think that he plays. So yeah, I think the play here is to duo his last card, attack the token. Again, Optimus, it's literally already happened this stream, and it's happened on several other streams. Like, I'm not just making this up here. Like, we literally, like, already <laughs> had a match where the guy's like, Oh, I'm watching your stream. Didn't realize it's you. And it's, like, again, it's not, like, most of these people, in most cases, it's not, like, intentional, right? It's like they join the queue go against me, then on turn five, they're like, oh, wait, it's, you know, it's, it's him. So, yeah, this isn't, like, being paranoid, this is literally based on past experience. So again, it's like, I'm not saying I know for sure. There's no way to know for sure. But, it, it, like, if I had to pick a match, or I think, hey, I think my opponent's up to something here. Uh, is this just game? 39? No, this isn't quite game. Uh, yeah, well... Yeah, what is this? My point is going to be so mad. Of all the ways that my opponent could lose, imagine your your <laughs> your opponent is being like <laughs> Cyberstein Master of Oz. GGs. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, either way, it was, it was, it was a good match. I don't know. I mean, I think not everyone was watching the whole match. But like, but like I said, every time our opponent had a random discard, he hit the best card in our hands. Just, just saying. It was a good match, though. Like, all, all, all memes aside, it is a good match. Still don't know if Cyber Side is a good card to side in. You know, being a little results oriented there. But, but you know. Interesting match. And like I said, I, I I mean I definitely think that like his deck is favored against ours, but I don't think it's like a lot. I think it's like a 60-40 matchup. Hold on, actually this isn't the window that I'm supposed to be showing you. This needs to be over here. So yeah. Good to show you some new goat sim stuff. And then we're gonna call it a night. No, I mean, again, it's I've literally played, like, thousands of GOAT format matches, so it's not that, like, I'm unused to, like, people getting lucky, you know? It's, it's again, it was a combination of factors. You know, the fact that any time I point ahead of discard, he'd sit there, pause for, like, ten seconds, you know, roll a die, pick a card that has nothing to do with the die that he rolled, and it was, like, the best card in my hand every single time. Again, like, I'm not even saying, like, the odds that, like, he was watching my stream were high. They might be, like, 20%, right? You know, maybe 20% chance he was watching the stream. Um, you know, just throwing out a random number. But, I mean, I think there were enough... It was enough to make me wonder, right? This isn't, like, hitting the lottery here. This is something that's literally happened on several occasions. Need to switch my view here. Sorry, I'm just being OCD here, trying to make this line up exactly with OBS. Yeah, I mean, the cookie crumbles a lot of different ways. All right, so so yeah, uh, not too many updates from last time. I mean, I know some of you guys probably haven't like caught the previous streams, so you haven't seen these sim before. But the main thing that I did was I worked on the extra deck, right? So you can kind of see I need to like reorder it, right? But like with my sim, like you don't actually have to build your fusion deck; it just comes preloaded with three of every fusion. So you can see. Um, you know, here we have the switch for meta targets. Uh, it's not displaying too well, because, like, because the resolution. Well, let me see if I can... There we go. That, that's better. So, yeah. So, we have the switch for meta targets. Right now, it's only showing legal meta targets. If we flip the switch, you know, then we get, like, our Dark Paladin, you know, our E-Heroes, our XYZ fusions or whatever. And we can see the non-meta targets. And then you can, like, sort by level. So, like, if we click on 5, boom. They're all of our level 5 meta targets. Now, again, I, I do need to, like, reorder this. Because, you know, I want to have, like, Dark Balter at the top of the list so you don't have to scroll down. Obviously, that only takes a few seconds. But, yeah, that's, like, that's basically, like, main thing I did. Oh, and I also, like, did some sort of minor, um... Minor, like, styling changes. Um... So you'll see, like, all of the modals that I have now kind of have this background. Like, viewing extra deck, there's, like, a polymerization behind it. And here, like, you can kind of see, like, there's sort of a metamorphosis in the background. Um, and then here, you know, Graveyard has, like, Call the Haunted behind it because it's, you know, the Graveyard. Um... 
And then, you know, for Banished, you know, again, like Dimension Fusion here, which is, I don't know, kind of cool. So now it's like this guy's Banished. You can view my Banished. And again, you know, little Dimension Fusion thing. Just again, for like sort of a minor styling change. Um, I think that was, you know, mainly it. So yeah, not not anything super game breaking necessarily. Um but I think just you know, it's 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 all about it's all about sort of the, the, the little details, right? Like obviously, you know, if this extra deck does coming does having an extra deck that's preloaded with three of everything that we can sort by level, does this by itself make this an amazing simulator? Well no. But this, combined with a lot of other things, a lot of other conveniences like this, will make it an amazing simulator. Or at least that's, that's the plan. And uh, PB experts, as far as the Monarch match, it's possible that I might have just missed a good play. That does happen. Especially when I'm trying to read the chat and play at the same time. It's very easy for me to, like, have my uh, attention divided and miss something good. I mean, Rap King, there are, like, art things that people are demanding about. Like, like, give me a specific example. Like, if there's something specific that you think it should have, say something. But saying that, oh, not a lot of people are asking about this. Like, doesn't mean it doesn't count for anything. So, like, what are the things that people are demanding? Because, like, I want to know. If there's something that I'm missing... Like, removing chat. Nobody's demanding that. There, There is a chat. It's right here, and it has, you know, and it has hotkeys. I mean, realize that, like, this is literally going to be an eSport. Like, I'm going to be, you know, having, like, $1,000 tournaments every week. And in that kind of environment, I don't want, like, a watcher's chat. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's just bad for the game. And you're right, nobody's demanding that, but that doesn't mean it's a good idea. Like, I can't just have people, like, sitting there, like, telling people what to do. And on the other hand, like, in Dueling Book... Nobody really, like, uses the Watcher chat for anything productive anyways. It's not like while I'm playing my match, there's a bunch of people, like, typing in the Watcher's chat. So, like, if you want to watch a match, it's fine. There will be Watchers. But, like, saying that, like, oh, yeah, people should just be able to, like, talk shit. Jason, it's literally right here. Response, yes, no thinking, right? And there's hotkeys. So, like, I type, if I just, you know, if outside of the chat box I just type R, it goes response. So I type Y, we get yes. No thinking. That's all you need. So, so yeah, I mean, people did suggest that, and I was like, oh, that's a good suggestion. And Smiling Vagrants, like, again, be more specific. I mean, part of... Part of the reason that I designed it this way is, first of all, the cards are... I mean, you can't really tell because I've made it smaller. Um, like, I've made the window smaller. But the cards are bigger here than on Dueling Book. So, um... Yeah, they're actually... Roughly speaking... It's again it's like kind of hard to tell the way that I've the way that I have it set up right now but the cards are like 50% bigger and like the name text is bigger like when you're on dueling book I mean it's probably better if I like show an example right so like I don't know if we do like a replay say we're going to watch this replay Yeah, so it's like, 
here, when this Thunder Dragon's in my grave, like, I literally can't, I can barely see the word Thunder Dragon on my screen. Uh, the deck builder isn't, isn't done yet. Um, so yeah, so part of the problem with Dueling Book is that it renders a lot of, like, pixels, but most of them aren't useful for anything, which makes the software lag, right? Because, like, clearly... Even if I, like, literally had a microscope, I wouldn't be able to see the text on this Thunder Dragon, and yet it's rendering here, which takes up, like, bandwidth on the server. So, like, there's just no value added. You know, plus, like, the art is smaller, the name is smaller, the attribute's smaller, like, everything's smaller. Now, it's fine, because obviously I can look at a Thunder Dragon and see, oh, this is clearly a Thunder Dragon. Right? But, like, it doesn't add any value. Whereas, you know, if I make this full screen, you know, if I make this full screen, we can clearly see the name, the art, the stats, the level, and so on. It's, you know, like if we put this card in play, hold on. Like, this is awkward. Now it's not letting me click. Oh, right, because it's a replay. Yeah, so... So we have a card in play, and I don't know, it might be kind of hard to see. It's kind of hard to see, to be honest, but, like, the Call of the Haunted is, you know, it's bigger than the Graceful Charity, you know, by a little, and the text is clearer. Like, I can clearly, again, it's kind of hard for you guys to see, I can clearly see that this is Call of the Haunted, right? We can clearly read that it says Call of the Haunted. But here I can't tell that this says Graceful Charity. Like, I can recognize the art and see that it's Graceful Charity, but we can't actually see that it's Graceful Charity based on the card. I don't know. I'm probably explaining it, like, terribly. Uh, but basically, like, the way that I'm rendering this makes the simulator have less lag and it makes the cards display in better resolution. And... Yeah, this this will be Jason, I don't know what you're asking. The cards on your thing are not placeholders. Yeah, I mean this is what the cards are actually going to look like if that's what you're asking. I mean, I could perhaps make the font look a little better. Uh like pick a different font. But yeah, this is generally how the cards are going to look. Yeah, why would I, like, make them look like something that they're not going to look like? I mean, again, would you rather have, like, a simulator that just lags like Dueling Book? Because, like, that's, like, this is literally why Dueling Book lags. I mean, it's part of the reason. Because, again, it, you take, like, a lot of computational power to basically say, hey, I want it to render in this exact way. And, again, like, you literally can't see the text on this Graceful Charity. You can't see that it says Graceful Charity. Like, to us, you're probably thinking, well, I know it's Graceful Charity because I can look at the art. But to a new player, like, Dueling Book is actually just awful for new players. Because you have this laggy simulator that renders everything in low resolution so that you literally can't read anything that's being rendered. Like, maybe if I made this, like, a lot bigger, there'd be a way that I could do that. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think I think the font could definitely, uh... That's not necessarily, like, the best font. Yeah, even here, it won't even let me, like, make the browser window bigger. Well, I mean, I mean, again, it. I don't see how that's. Like, I don't see how that specifically is is awkward. I mean, I could make it not touch the edge. Why is this Hold on? Oh, here we go.
again, Rap King, like, the issue isn't, like... You know, the the issue isn't that, uh, you know, people's... Like, my computer is quite powerful. The issue isn't my computer. The issue is that Dueling Book Server, you know... Yeah, I mean, Dueling Book Server causes lag and can't render cards in high resolution regardless of what computer you have. Like, the, the FPS isn't the issue. The issue is latency and just the fact that you can't see anything. And again, like, here you can actually see the art, like, better. Like, like if I had this Shining Angel on Dueling Book... Yeah, I mean, again, it's like, would you just... Again, there's there's a few options. One is I could just, you know, render all of the cards exactly like they are in real life. They're going to look crappy. But I could have a really powerful CPU so that it doesn't lag, which is one option. But then again, you're still stuck with, like, your cards looking like, you know, like the... Um, you know, like, like the game that I made. Like, do you guys actually, like, there are a lot of parts of Dueling Book that look good. But, like, the cards are not one of them. Like, in my opinion, the cards on Dueling Book actually, I mean, they look good when they're that big, right? When they're giant, they look great. But again, I, I literally can't read the names of any of the cards. Like, why would you want a simulator where if I'm not hovering over Graceful Charity, I can't see that the card says Graceful Charity? Like, why would you want a simulator where you literally can't read what's on the card? Because you realize, for all practical purposes, this Graceful Charity is basically just artwork. That's all it is, right? We can't read the name. We can't read that it says spell card. We can't read the text. So this is ba the only thing that serves any practical function is the artwork. Right? I mean, is there any, like, disagreement about that? Again, I'm not saying that I need to work on it more. Well, again, I'm trying to make I'm trying to make it easy for new players. Yeah, the art is important. That's why I have the art bigger on my card. Like again, don't get me wrong, the art is important. But like having a bunch of text that's unreadable isn't important. Like for all we know, this text here could just say nothing. This could just say, you know, I don't know, could say apples are delicious. For all we know, like we literally can't read the text. So if we're reading the text, then why are we spending CPU power to put it on the card? I mean, again, realize that, like, first of all, this simulator is just going to be, like, way better than everyone in every other way. So, you know, it's going to attract Yu-Gi-Oh! players fine. And again, realize that, like, probably 80% of the people who are going to play aren't going to be Yu-Gi-Oh! players. Because, like, I'm literally going to make it an eSport. I'm going to be, like, marketing this to, you know, like, Smash players, for example. Like, they don't, they don't care. And again, like... Again, could the font be better on my cards? Sure, absolutely. I'm not saying it couldn't be. But, like, the Dueling Book cards just don't look good. You're, like, basically using a bunch of resources to render something that no one can read. So there's literally, like, no point. Again, explain to me, like, what the point is. You know, like, here, for example, we can see Graceful Charity has one line of card text, and Thunder Dragon has two lines of card text. Is that important? What if every card in the effect box had the same amount of text that Graceful Charity had? Would that be, like, a deal breaker? Because, again, you literally can't read it. We're talking about tiny little pixels on your screen that you can't read. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, what I could do, 
is I could have settings for the edges, right? So you like have a setting that's, hey, do you want your uh, do you want your card's art to extend all of the way to the right and left edges, or do you want it to be smaller? I could just make that a setting. Uh, what do anime cards look like? Well, again, give me give me something actionable. Like when you say it looks worse, what specifically looks worse? Is it like just the cards look worse? Yeah, I'll, I'll just make it a setting. I'll just make it a setting. You can set the edges wherever you want. Because that's, that's pretty trivial. So yeah, I'll, I'll just make that a setting. Yeah, I'll see what the anime cards look like. I kind of have a rough idea, but I feel like I need to see a picture. Oh, I kind of see. Like, it doesn't have the name. But it has the art, the level, the attribute... Problem is, I don't know. It's... Hmm. That's not a terrible idea. Uh, well, again, mostly, Tyler, the reason why is because of real estate. Like, uh, you know, if we flip this over, you know, if we put the stars on, like, Blackluster Soldier right here, they're gonna, like, overlap with the name. Right, so. Seb, it's just the same as Dueling Book. Realize they're far apart horizontally because they're in attack mode. If we turn them to defense, then it's, then it's the same. This is, this is just the same as Dueling Book in terms of the spacing of the cards from each other. Uh, PB Experts, the white text has nothing to do with field versus hand. It has to do with monster versus spell or trap. So, again, you know, it's like I, I try to make it somewhat close to the real thing. Um, you know, in Yu-Gi-Oh, monsters always have black names and spells or traps always have white names. So I, I kept that consistent. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we we could, yeah, we could, uh, we could do it that way. We could do it that way, where th where the cards just don't have names on them. Well, I mean, I've discussed this in previous streams. The reason why it improves dueling book is a few things. One, it's going to be like twice as fast to play a game for a few reasons. Uh, again, like, there's gonna be shortcuts for, you know, GOAT format cards. Like, Scapegoat will automatically put four GOAT tokens to play. Thunder Dragon will automatically add two Thunder Dragons. Uh, again, you know, having, like, an extra deck that is actually what a GOAT format extra deck is supposed to look like is kind of a big deal. Um, in general, dragging and dropping is much faster than hovering and clicking. And you're also less likely to misclick. I mean, even on my stream today, I had plenty of times where I'm, like, hovering over the card, trying to click the right option, and because the hover menu lags, that actually makes you more likely to click on the wrong option. I mean, let he who has never misclicked on Dueling Book before cast the first stone, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Jason, like, that's just literally how Yu-Gi-Oh cards are, as far as dark text on a purple background. So, it's just weird, because, like, some of the feedback is like, oh, you're changing the way cards look, don't do that. And then other feedback is, oh, you didn't change the way that cards look, you should do that. So it's like, you know, again, the way that, like, cards are in real life is, if it's a monster, it has a black name. If it's a spell or trap, it has a white name. Now, does that make any logical sense? 
Not to me, but that's just the way the cards are. So, I mean, if people think... And I, to be honest, I can make that a setting, too, where you can just do black and white, all black, or all white. Uh, so, Membo, the way that attacking will work, I... I haven't figured it out perfectly, and I haven't implemented it yet. But the way it'll basically work is our opponent has a Shining Angel, and, um, you know, we'll basically drag and drop to attack. So I'll drag my BLS on top of the Shining Angel, let go, and then, you know, and then it'll say, you know, Black Luster Soldier attack Shining Angel, and then there's going to be, like, a little sword here on top of the art, and there's going to be, like, a little shield here on top of the Shining Angel. And maybe a, a line drawn between them. That's the basic idea. Basically, everything's going to be done by drag and drop. And part of the reason why is... Um, you know, part of the reason why is... Uh, you know, drag and drop's also a lot easier for mobile users. Like, if you're on an iPad, it's kind of hard to, like, hover and click. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I could, I could do it, I could do it anime style. I think people might be willing, be willing to, more, might be more accepting of that. Yeah, it's just the only thing that like I don't like about putting the name on the card is like, there are literally some people who don't know what the name of a card is unless they have a way to read it. Now, obviously, you can get it by, like, hovering, right? Like, over here, it says, okay, this is Blackluster Soldier, this is Shining Angel, this is Gatling Dragon. So you can get the names that way. Um, But it's like, I don't like the idea of having to memorize, having to mentally associate a card's artwork with its name. Now, obviously, 99% of players are doing that already, but, you know, there'll be a lot of people who haven't necessarily memorized the art with the name. Yeah, I mean, Jason, like, guys, constructive feedback. Saying it's ugly isn't helpful. Saying what, you know, you gotta be specific. You gotta be specific. It's kind of like I was talking about even at the start of the stream, but before this, right? You know, when you play a deck, you gotta have a specific reason why you're playing it. So, again, like, you know, saying, like, oh, you know, make, make the edges more... sort of, make the edges narrower, uh, that's fine. Saying, like, oh, you know, maybe consider doing it the anime way. That's fine. Saying it's ugly, that's that's just not helpful. I mean, it is helpful, because I would rather you say that it's ugly than lie and say you think it looks amazing when really you don't think it looks amazing. So, I do appreciate the honesty, but... Well, again, say, say what you don't like about it. Uh, Jason, the background is customizable. Yeah, I mean, maybe there's some sort of, like, compromise, because, uh, again, like, the way that Dueling Book is set up right now, like, the cards are literally, like, rendered as if they're for ants, right? Yeah, maybe I'll just make it very customizable. That's, like, probably the solution here. Well, again, if, if people are fine with having no text, I mean, that's fine, but, you know...
And final mythology, I don't understand what you mean by the middle of the fields is too close. Yeah, you do have to hover to read the the effect text because there's no real, there's no way to really get around that, right? Because obviously, like you can't. There's there's gonna be a lot of text on a Yu-Gi-Oh card any way you slice it. But yeah, I'll 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 workshop the uh the look of the individual cards a bit. Yeah, I mean. I mean, there are downsides to making things customizable, too. Like, obviously, like, Apple sort of has the philosophy of just pick the way that most people like and don't allow them to, like, go off and do their own thing. Um. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're right, but mine do look uh, a little bootleg. I don't know. Yeah, there's probably probably some some something that needs to change. Um, but it's like it's hard to say specifically. You know, like like what's what's the most important? Uh oh, the answer to that, Michael, is is no. I mean, I have talked about life points. Uh. In, in prior prior streams on um so yeah the only difference from like this opposed to dueling book will be with cards like Solomon return that pay half I'll automatically have a function that pays half because some people aren't good at math. But yeah, right now you just, you know, type in the text box. Oh, and, I, and then I also added this sound switch. So if you turn sound off and then, you know, say we add 2,000. No, I mean, I mean, looks are important. I'm not, like, keep in mind, I'm not trying to say here that, like, looks don't matter. Um... I mean, I think that they matter almost as much as most people say that they do. But I think people have a narrow definition of what's ugly. It's just interesting, because, like, there's a lot of things about Dueling Book that I think we wouldn't tolerate if some other simulator didn't do those things, right? Like, imagine, like, sort of we're, like, in an alternate universe or sort of hypothetical situation or something where... You know, someone's like building a new simulator, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it's exactly like an existing simulator, except it like lags all the time, and it disconnects all the time. And when you get disconnected, you just immediately lose, and you know, just like a bunch of other things that suck about Dueling Book, right? People just be like, "Yeah, there's no way I'm using that," but yet we already do. So it's, I'm sure there's like a, I don't know. Uh, isn't it the same on Dueling Book? Is it? I don't know. Let me let me see. Cause I thought it was the same on Dueling Book. Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I I can change that. Oh, I guess you're right. It, it, it they are they are flipped the other way. I think that varies from game to game. Like I feel like uh on some of the Magic simulators they had all cards facing so that you could read them. But yeah, my, my point is, I guess I don't know. I mean, it's kind of making a diff bunch of different points at once. Well, I mean... I mean, it depends. Like, if the Shining Angel's flipped, then you just can't tell, like, how much attack it has and how much defense... I mean, you can, but you have to, like, read it upside down.
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If you, like, have any specific suggestions of someone that I should talk to, I'd be happy to do that. But... Yeah, I mean, I can... Actually, yeah, I actually meant to change something with the attack and defense, because... Um... We can use shadows to to brighten it up a bit and make it more visible. The yeah, I mean the, the name of the card's literally in bold. Yeah, so I mean that's yeah, that's that's what I'm doing here. It's flipped around so it so it faces me. And DB stats like they aren't actually printed on the card either. They're like enlarged outside of the box. Yeah, I mean I could I could make I could make the font bigger on this particular line. But again, like I don't know, the exact these are like making this font slightly bigger is kind of a minor thing. Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of hard to tell but with the name there's actually a very light shadow behind it. It's a white shadow, but like the white shadow effectively makes the black more visible. And the same thing with the white. With the white, there's a black shadow behind that makes the white more visible. Yeah, I don't watch this. This is just for goat format. Yeah, I know that you're talking about the uh, the cards on the field. I mean. I, I thought you were talking about one thing, and now we're talking about another thing. Yeah, I know that you mean the cards in the field now. So yeah, it's like, uh, hold on, let me... Like, one thing that we can do... I just need to find the, uh, the CSS. Is we can make sort of the, the name a lot more brighter. Uh, so we need to go to... Sorry, just give me a sec. Oh, uh, yeah, name. Okay. So, let me... Let me change this, and you guys can... Again, it might be kind of hard to tell on the stream, because, like... You know, the stream kind of makes things... You know, a little smaller than they actually are on my screen. So, like, let me, let me recompile this. So yeah, I mean, it, it it's probably hard to tell, but the shadow behind the text is a little brighter, so now, like, you can see the black and the white in the name a bit more easily. Like, if anything, on the white, it's a little easier to tell. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell on the stream, but, like... I could make it even I could make it even more extreme so that you can see the effect more. Yeah, now you can really tell. So this is kind of like the effect like tuned up to the max. So now you can see there's like this sort of big white shadow behind the block. And here it's in my opinion, this is too much. It almost looks, like, awkward. It's like, what the hell's going on here? And here, with the spells and shops, it's like, same thing. You're like, why is this black shadow behind the name? So, I don't necessarily know the correct amount of shadow that the name should have. And the issue might just be that the font needs to change, to be totally honest. Like, the shadow might not be the issue, the font might just be the issue. It's uh it's kind of hard to say I think.
Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily know what the best font is to use. Uh, I think this is just like some default like font that Google made. So if you don't like this font, you can blame Google, I guess. But yeah, I, I could change it. I'm, I'm definitely not married to the font. And yeah, I mean, what I'll probably do... I mean, I don't necessarily know, like, what... Oh, Times New Roman, I think, would be gross. Yeah, I mean... People are talking about, like, pick a game designer. Like, no game designer uses, like, serif fonts in their games. Yeah, like, a serif font, especially this small, would look incredibly gross. Like, that's just... That's not even, like, my opinion. That's just, like, the entire world's opinion. Like, for small text, you... For a, for a small font size, you, like, never use a serif font. In general, serif fonts are probably, like, just going out of style as a whole. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were being serious. See, this is the thing. I can't tell when people are being serious or not. You guys need to stop trolling me. I thought you were being 100% serious, and I was going to, like, use you as an example of why I just can't blindly take everyone's suggestions. I was going to make an example out of you. I mean, obviously, Comic Sans, I know, is, like, is a meme, but, like, Times New Roman is an actual, like, real font that some people, like, unironically use. So, like, when you said Times New Roman... Yeah, I mean, uh... Yeah, I mean, Jason, there there will be sound effects. Um, and again, you can see I have this, you know, sound on, sound off button so that you can turn it on or off. Um, right now... You know, right now, uh, I just have sound effects for the life points, but, you know, there will be, uh, there will be sort of all the standard sound effects. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think part of it's that people are, like, used to dueling book. Like, if you look at Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, for example, I'm not saying that I necessarily prefer, like, the look of dueling book to Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, but I feel like one one look isn't like clearly better than the other, and there's different things that people like about both, and I don't think either one is perfect. Yeah, I mean the the uh you know the the background will be will be customizable. Yeah, I mean before that people used YVD. Yeah, you're talking about uh, Zero Creative, right? Zero Creative started with an X. That was the name of the site that made it. The name of the program is YVD. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not denying that, you know, uh, that Dueling Book looks better than certainly what I have now. Um, I think it maybe looks slightly better than Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, but I don't think it does by a lot. Uh, I mean, there's certain things that I, that I don't like about Dueling Book. And again, I think a lot of it is just, like, we've been using the same-looking software for, like, 10 years or whatever. 10 years? Yeah, probably about 10 years. Uh, so I think that people are... Some stuff that, that people are used to. But yeah, certain aspects of it you know, do look good. Um, I don't know, even, like, certain things here, like how there's just, like, a white text box. Just a white rectangular text box. To me, there's, like, probably a way to make that look better, right? Like, if we're being, if we're being honest here.
Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not, like, trying to pick on you, Jason, but, like, you're just saying, like, it looks better, obviously. Like, okay, like, what specifically about it? The fact that it, you know, I mean, part of this here, part of what I don't like about Dueling Book is you'll notice, like, how much screen real estate this takes up, right? So part of the issue is, like, it renders the full card, and then it also renders the text below it. Which, in my opinion, is, like, redundant, right? So if I, like, mouse over Spy, why do we need to have, like, its text displayed twice? Like, you know, why do I need to have it displayed once here and once here? Yeah, I mean, this is just redundant. I'm not saying my way is the best way, but literally displaying the same thing twice doesn't make any, you know, is, is unnecessary. Because we can, you know, use that screen real estate for something else. Like, in my opinion, one of, like, one of the downsides to Dueling Book is that since it uses its screen real estate very inefficiently, the cards are rendered so small. Yeah, but, again, I, th I think you're missing the point. The point is, is, oh, if we're not meant to read this, then don't, don't give me something that I'm not meant to read, right? Like, again, it's kind of like, you know, printing the text on the Graceful Charity that no one can read. That's just a wasted resource. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I disagree the card itself is the most important thing. I think it's one of the most important things. But, like, the fact that the cards look better isn't why people started using Dueling Book over YVD. Right, it was it was a lot of other things that YVD did poorly. I'm not trying to say that like YVD is better than Dueling Book. That's not the argument that I'm trying to make. Like what I think is important. I mean, there's a lot of things. One is like, in general, I think I think convenience, convenience is really like the most important thing. Now, having cards that look nice, that's part of convenience, right? But there are a lot of other aspects of convenience, too. Yeah, I mean... You know... Yeah, I think we're nitpicking, like, a little here. Like, when I'm hovering over a card, I'm not hovering over a card to see its art better. Well, I mean, again, I think some things you're right about, I think some things, like, are either extremely minor or you're not necessarily right about. Yeah, I mean, I mean the cards, the cards could definitely use improvement. Like, I'm not saying that. I, I mean, I actually think, I think this window over here, I think, is a non-issue. Other than, okay, someone said maybe we could make the font bigger on the name. Well, I mean, I mean, part of it is that the the art on the card is rendered better on the actual card in play. Again, it's I'm making it smaller so that you guys can see on the stream. Well, again, ugly is just, like, a component of convenience, right? Like, if you look at iPhone, for example, right? Why do people buy an iPhone? They buy it because it's it just works. It's convenient. It is intuitive, right? And the fact that iPhone's interface looks great is an important component of that. But, like, the whole picture is that it's convenient for me to walk into a store, buy an iPhone understand how it works and not feel like an idiot while I'm using it, right? That's kind of like the big picture. 
And I, I personally, just for the record, I don't own an iPhone, but I understand the appeal to them. And like when most people are building a product, like the iPhone is like what they look up to because like the iPhone is essentially like the definition of like a good mass marketable product. So, um, so again, it's not that like, oh yeah, I just don't care like how the simulator looks like that's not it at all. What are you going to do with the black space below the text box? This, this is the chat, right? This is a chat. So yeah, I mean, I think I think some of this, like, people are, might be a little confused about, like, what some of the stuff does. Um, but yeah, so I think there's some stuff we agree on, some stuff we disagree on. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Dan. I think Hearthstone is by far, like, the best-looking... Really just the best-looking online card game, period. Uh... Seb, there is a button to see rulings. That's what the rulings button is. And again, this is like another feature that is part of convenience that like Dueling Book doesn't have. Right? Like you'll be able to click on a card, go, oh, I want all rulings related to Call the Haunted. And you'll just be able to click rulings and get them. Yeah, I mean, again, like I'm trying to make it like, I'm trying to make the barrier of entry into GOAT format as low as possible. That's really, that's really, that's really the goal here, is I want to be able to take an idiot off the street, or a smart person off the street, they don't have to be an idiot, I want to be able to take a random person off the street, give them this simulator, and they'll be able to, uh, to, to use it and understand what's going on and not feel like they have no idea what they're doing. Yeah, again, I'm, we're, we're in agreement, but like, <laughs> I feel like you just like keep repeating yourself when we're talking in circles. I'm in agreement that looks matter. You seem to think that I don't think that looks matter. I do think that looks matter. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that like a Yu-Gi-Oh player is is some sort of, like, mystical being that, like, functions differently than a normal human. Right? I think Yu-Gi-Oh! players are people. And, obviously, a lot of different people. Uh, but, yeah, I think that looks matter just because they matter to everyone else in the world, not because there's something unique about Yu-Gi-Oh players that makes them matter more. But I, I don't think looks are the only thing that matters. Right? I mean, I think kind of like in real life with people, I think looks is sort of like what gets your foot in the door, so to speak. Right? Like, if I think that a chick is ugly, then I'm not going to talk to her and then I'm not going to find out that she has an amazing personality. Right? Kind of like same thing here. If looks aren't good, they're not going to play it and find out that it has an amazing personality. No, I mean, looks are, like, looks are definitely, like, a top priority. It's it's not like a come back to the looks thing. So yeah, it's not like I'm just going to worry about functionality first and then, uh, you know, worry about looks later. That's that's not the goal.
Yeah, I mean, Jason also realized that, like, uh, I would agree with you, except for the fact, or I'd potentially agree with you, except for the fact that, like, phases aren't very important in Yu-Gi-Oh! in general. Like, on Dueling Book, like, half the people don't even use phases. So it's, like, clearly not super important. So it's not like you constantly have to look over to check the phase. And just in general, maybe this is obvious. Like, maybe this is obvious. Um, but I'll say it anyway, which is that clearly I'm not going to make my simulator exactly like Dueling Book, or there'd be no point in making it. Now, I'm not saying that just because Dueling Book is doing something, that means that I shouldn't do it. Um, but, like, I think some of the feedback to me, again, to me strikes me as oh, this is different from Dueling Book, change it. Well, it's like, well, it depends on what it is, right? Jason, yeah, there, there, there is a hotkey. It's literally right here. So, again, I'm not typing anything in the chat, right? Look over here in the chat. So I type R. It says response. I hit the Y key. It says yes. I hit the no key. It says no. I hit the T key. It says thinking. And yeah, this is this is actually my web browser here being a little glitchy. And, or we can just click the buttons, right? The purple buttons are here too. So if you'd rather click the button to say response, um, you know that's that's something you can do too. And uh, there's there's gonna be a bunch of different hotkeys in general. Like I think S is yeah S switches between graveyard and banished. It's like S for switch, I guess. Um, oh yeah, and then the, the up and down keys go through the phases. So I'm hitting like up and down on my keyboard to cycle through the phases. So that's something you can do. So yeah, like hotkeys, that's a feature that Dueling Book doesn't have that like we're going to have. Uh... So, so Final Mythology, I think you, I think the point that you're making is valid. So, so yeah, like, again, like, screen real estate is kind of the thing that, like, I'm going, uh, I'm going OCD over with this, with this game. So it's like in Dueling Book, again, you can't tell because how I'm streaming, but on Dueling Book, your uh, vertical space is sort of more in demand than horizontal space. So I've taken, you know, a part of the sort of this row here and made it a column so that on a standard resolution monitor, it actually, like, gives you more space overall. I, I don't know if that makes sense. If I explained it well. But... I think anyone who's played Dueling Book on a standard resolution monitor like knows what I'm talking about, which is that you have all of this extra space to the right and to the left, and you don't have any extra vertical space. So basically, like my theory was, hey, I'm gonna take some of this, you know, I'm gonna take this row and convert it to a column, and then like, you know, if I make this full screen, again, it's kinda like Hard to see. Let me actually just switch this view in OBS. Uh, give me a sec. So yeah, so this is what it looks like. And I can actually, whoops. Whoa, that wasn't what I was trying to do. So this is what it looks like on a normal monitor. Uh, so you'll see here that like to the right and to the left, there's not, like, a lot of leftover space. Whereas on Dueling Book, like, there's, like, this amount of space left over. And if we do a F11 to make it full screen, then it actually uses all of the space perfectly, in essence. Like, every single inch of the screen is being taken up. I mean, right now we have this blank space here and here, but we'll use that for something else eventually, because, you know, we're going to need, like, more buttons. 
does it like does this give you guys like a better view to sort of like understand how it would look when you're actually using it i don't know hopefully this this kind of like gives you a better perspective of what this would look like if you're actually using it Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, if you're watching, like, Twitch on mobile, you know, I, I don't know, like, how well it's gonna look. But, I mean, I don't know. I think it's probably the same with Dueling Book, right? I mean... Like, again, I mean, I have, like, this, and I can have this and Dueling Book side by side, and I can compare them, and I can be like, oh, my cards are larger than Dueling Books. Oh, my text is larger than Dueling Books. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just, like accidentally like confused everyone with like my stream setup oh yeah don't get me wrong yeah yeah the, the cards can still use improvement yeah the cards can definitely still use improvement Um. And yeah, I guess probably pick a better font. Have different ways of showing the cards. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm unique. I would actually rather my opponent's cards face me. And like, even particularly with like magic players, I don't know. Some magic players do this. Well, they'll play their cards facing their opponent so that they can read them faster. It's just like, I don't know, to me, like, I don't think that's like a clear one way or the other. Again, we could probably just like make that, uh, we could probably just make that a setting. I mean, if, if people would rather, you know, the cards be rotated, uh, 180 degrees. I actually might just be able to change that right now. Uh, hold on. Whoops. Sorry, I'm... Um, that's not what I'm trying to do. Oh, yeah, sure. It's... I'm not saying that, like, they're the norm. Because, obviously, think about it this way, right? Clearly, you both can't be flipping each other's cards. Because, obviously, if my cards are facing my opponent, then... If his cards are facing me, that would be bizarre. Uh, oh yeah, you could do that when it hover it flips facing you. Hold on. Let me... Just calm down, guys. Give me a sec. I'm going to try to change it right now. I'm going to try changing it right now, and you guys can tell me how this looks. Uh, I just need to find the part in the code. So let's see. Uh, yeah, we need to go to... Why am I doing this? Because literally every simulator for GOAT format sucks balls. Like, uh, we basically have a choice between two simulators. One that is, like, laggy and crashes and, like, has judges that don't know any of the rulings and has a user interface that leads people to misclick a lot. Or, that one's Dueling Book. Or we can use Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, which has an opposite set of problems, which is just basically all of the problems that automated simulators have in general. Which isn't necessarily a lot.
Oh, yeah, I also did add a reveal hand button, which is what this looks like for now. Then you can click stop revealing. But hold on, let me, let, let me, let me change this real quick. Uh, okay, so yeah. Uh, Uh, I could add Dark Magician Girl to my field, but it would take a while because I don't have all the effects and images yet. So I'd have to take the image, take the text, put it in the program, and so on. Uh, yeah, I think this will work, hopefully. Oh wait, no, it's not gonna work. No, don't ig ignore this. Um, yeah, I have. I have all these cards. I made a a monster, a spell, a trap, shining angel, and then every fusion. But uh but yeah, give me give me a sec. Alright, well, I need to, <laughs> clearly I, I, I need to, to mess around with this here as far as uh, making the cards face the other way. Yeah, I'm not necessarily sure what the best approach would be to make this look good on mobile. Because uh, realize, like, just the Yu-Gi-Oh card game wasn't designed to be a mobile video game, right? Like, if you look at Duel Links, for example, it's like, Oh, if we just only have three of each zone, it'll look better on mobile. And it's like, well, yeah, that works, but I can't just only have three of each zone or it wouldn't be the same game. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll come up with a solution to mobile. It's not going to be, like, the top priority, but it is a priority. And also, like, mobile can mean different things to different people. Like, making something look good on a phone and making it look good on an iPad are kind of different. An iPad is, in a way, like, closer to a, to a computer than it is to a phone. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad you guys gave me some feedback, and I'm glad there's some stuff that you guys liked. Like, I think we all like the rulings button, right? Obviously right now it doesn't do anything yet, because I haven't loaded all the rulings. But, you know, you'll click rulings, and it'll open up another tab that has, you know, like for this, for example, any ruling that mentions Blackluster Soldier. Boom. Um, you know, I think we like hotkeys, right? We can go up and down to cycle through the phases. We can, you know... Type R, Y, N, you know, to to quickly get responses. Um, 
And again, I mean, for some reason, people don't give a shit about this, but me as a GOAT format player, again, having three of every fusion preloaded and being able to sort by level, like, is there anyone else that thinks that that's a big deal to, to them? Like... Okay, at least one other person thinks that the that the extra deck shit is fucking amazing, as you put it. But yeah, it's like again, maybe uh, some of the stuff I think I say this, and you know, I think it's obvious, but maybe it's not obvious to everyone. Like, I want this to be a tool. That as me that is how do I put this? Um, I, I basically want it to be for everyone, right? Like I don't want this to be like, oh, half of goat format players like it and half of them don't, right? That's like not what I'm trying to make here. So anything that's like, you know, a feature that helps you and doesn't like make someone else's experience worse, yes, I will add it. Right? Um, now, will I add it, like, right away? Well, no, I, obviously I can't, like, you know, I'm not a wizard. I can't just make everything awesome, like, right away. Like, it's, it's, it's obviously a, a work in progress. But, yeah, I mean, actually, believe it or not, maybe, you know, maybe it's not obvious because, like, some aspects of the game look ugly. But, like, literally the first thing that I did when I made the simulator... Literally, first thing I did was figure out, okay, how's how how are the cards gonna look? That was step one. Like for a while, my simulator is just a shining angel on a screen, and that was it. That was the entire simulator. Like yay, right? So that was like literally the first thing that I did, which hopefully like shows that like yeah, it is important. Like it was you know, it is it is important. Um. And I think people had some good suggestions. One, which is that, hey, there should be multiple settings for how the cards look. I agree with that. Now, which setting is the default? I think, you know, that's perhaps debatable. Uh, probably the more normal one should be the default. Um, and I I agree that it's, this is probably not the best font. I don't know what the best font is, which is kind of why I just use the default font. Um... So yeah, I didn't like specifically pick this font. This is just like some default font that came with like my uh sort of like templating engine that I was using. And then oh yeah, I also forgot to show you. I mean maybe you guys don't care about this at all. I mean if we got a login page, right now it doesn't do anything. But you know, pr pretty basic stuff. Which, you know, I think I think this looks at least this looks fairly professional. Um and so yeah, I'm gonna my main priorities going forward, I am gonna <laughs> uh yeah uh, wonder. It sounds like you just got here, but yes, uh, you get all the fusions. Look, look at this. We got all the fusions. We got them all. We get filtered by level. Oh my god. Be like, oh, I want all level one fusions. Darn, there's only thousand eyes. I want all level fours. Oh, there's two. You know, whatever. And oh, I, you know, I want, want Dark Paladin. Boom, there's Dark Paladin. You know, if we just, Flip the switch on meta targets. So, yeah, I think uh, I think the extra deck looks good. Uh, what was I gonna say? Where was I going with this? Oh yeah, I was gonna say next steps. Uh, next steps are gonna be yes, I'm gonna re redesign the way the cards look. Have have some settings. Um, try out different things. Uh yeah, I I am I am salting and hashing. Um and in fact, I need to look into if Dueling Book was salting their passwords or not. That's on my to-do list just cuz I kind of care cuz I use the tool. Oh uh, yeah, final. There is going to be like 
Yeah, the most used fusions will be at the top. So yeah, uh... I can actually... PB Expert, if it makes you feel better, I can actually show you my code that... Uh, salts and hashes the password. I'm using bcrypt, if you're familiar with bcrypt. I think most people are. But that's what I'm using. Uh, oh, here we go. So yeah, so... Here, here's my code. This is kind of... I like literally just started working on this, so... If it looks bad, don't don't make fun of me. Uh, but yeah, somewhere we have bcrypt in here. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, we have you know gen salt, and then you know I have this variable called hash word, which is a hashed password, and then it hashes the password using the salt. So yeah, uh, rest assured. The, the password is hashed and salted. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I'm not like a security guy, but I know like a lot of people who are. So yeah, I do. I do understand the... Uh, the importance of security. So yeah, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to cover all my bases here. Trying to, you know, dot my I's, cross my T's. I think, you know, a lot of different people care about different things. You know, I think most people like literally won't care if their passwords are hashed and salted because they don't know what that means and why it's important. Uh but yeah, for the 1% of the people who does care, I want to do that. And also because it's the right thing to do. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually interesting because sometimes like, I talk to quote unquote security people, and sometimes it amazes me when they don't know like super basic things. Like, not that this is really security related, but I was talking to some guy who like was giving a presentation, and like he didn't realize that like when you visit a website that like images are cached. And it's like not knowing that is a little weird. Oh, so. So, wonder. I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up. Sort of a lot of the philosophy behind this uh, simulator, I think, is going to be play the way you want to play. So, with this simulator, like, rather than Dueling Book telling you, "Hey, these are the cards that are legal, and here's our rating system," there will be like an official like league with an official card pool. But like, you will be able to create your own league and say, "Hey, in my league." you know, with my friends or whatever, I'm going to allow Xarian. And you'll be able to set things like, here's how our rating system's going to work. It's going to be ELO, or it's going to be true skill, or this is how fast it's going to decay or whatever. Um, I'm debating either having two official leagues, uh, which is... Have one, you know, have the official Xarian League and the official Xarian List League, and then you can join one or both. Or just making the official League not allow Xarian, and then, hey, if you want to play with Xarian, you have to go make your own. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, like, I'm not... I, like, we, I could actually talk for days about, like, why we shouldn't play with Xarian, but... If you guys are familiar with, uh, what's that called? The group on Facebook. Oh yeah, Nostalgic Duelist. They're all, like, pro-Xarian. So, like, if there's a thousand people that want to use Xarian, like, why would I, why would I tell them they can't? Like, why would I say no? 
you know, you're not allowed to use Xarian, go use a different simulator. Like, why would I do that? So, um... So, yeah, again, like... It is hard, because, like, there needs to be some balance between, like, sort of enforcing a standard that is the right standard and like letting people do what they want, right? There's kind of, there has to be some balance. Uh so I mean I, I won't get into like why people don't play Xerianless any or why people play Xerianless now, because I think most people just know. But I think I don't know. I mean there are two reasons. I don't know which one was necessarily more important. But the um the two reasons were one technically like a goat format with Xarian but without cybernetic revolution like never existed right like it's just it's a made up format um and the second reason is that like Xarian is just not like it's not good for the game and obviously like that's a little vague and perhaps not helpful but it um it's it's just it makes the game it takes away a lot of options from the game and it makes like it makes a lot of things uh less viable which i know it's still a little vague but um you know like people have to like consider all these different types of tech cards now like oh should i play azura like with Xerian, no one would ever play Xura. um or even like gravekeeper spy like isn't really as viable if Xarian's around because Xarian's just like a better gravekeeper spy. Yeah, it's just it's just one of those cards where it's like having a card where honestly, like I think if we were to Yeah, it boxed out too many other cards, exactly. And it didn't like have it Xarian doesn't have like a ton of counters. It certainly didn't then. I think maybe I think now it wouldn't be as bad. But it just got to the point where, like, every deck had to play, like, two or three Xerian. And, like, Scapegoat was just almost a bad card because, like, so many Xerians were flying around. And, like, having Goat format where Scapegoat is almost unplayable, like, kind of defeats the purpose of the format. Um, see, honestly, like, I think if, I mean, maybe we'll find out. But if we, like, played Xerian again um i think like the meta would just be like i think warriors would i think chaos warriors would just be the most popular deck because having a deck list that starts with three blade knights three Xarians, and a bunch of chaos monsters to me is just like like what are you supposed to do about that like because Sort of the trade-off with aggro in Xerianless Goats is, like, you sort of either go... Like, originally what people would do is go, like, the King Tiger Wangu route, and you would just play, like, Protect the Wangu, and that would, like, take care of, like, all the scapegoats, Tsukiyomis, and metas, but then, like, you wouldn't really have a lot of stuff to deal with flip effects necessarily. Whereas the decks now, it's like, oh, I'm going to play, like, three Blade Knights and, like, a Mystic Swordsman level two and not play King Tiger Wangu, and basically I'm gunning against flips instead of, like, goats and meta. So, like, that's kind of, like, the trade-off. is like, depending on the meta, you have to decide, hey, do I want to be, like, anti-scapegoat or do I want to be anti-flip effects? But if you just get to play three Blade Knight and three Xarian in your Chaos deck list, then you just get to play both, and there's not really, like, real counterplay to that. Like, yeah, you can still play Gravekeeper Spy, but that would just be, like, the only, like, real counter to that kind of strategy. It's like, okay, I'll just play, like, Gravekeeper Spy and, like, side deck Messenger a piece, maybe. Because even Bottomless, Bottomless is just a one-for-one. -one. And it's like, yeah, Xarian, like, Xarian can't be roted, but, like, you just get to play three copies of it, and there's no downsides to doing so. Like, basically, just the fact that it's... The fact that it's a dark, 
that has good attack, good defense, and pierces is just like it's just not really like a fair card. And it's not part of the format, you know? So it's like I don't know. I think I feel like if we just added Xarian, the format would just be like people complaining about warriors a lot more. Like that's just basically it. Like the format would just be like you know, warriors playing three Xarians, goat control playing like two or three Xarians, and then you know, Thunder Dragon Chaos playing like probably two Xarians. I don't know. Maybe Chaos wouldn't wouldn't play Xarians. You could argue that maybe Thunder Dragon Chaos wouldn't need to play Xarians. Yeah, I mean, uh, Cybernetic. I don't know. Cybernetic could be in the simulator. If a lot of people want it, I'll add it. Uh. It's just awkward, because if you play with Cybernetic Revolution, there's just so many, like, ridiculously good OTK decks. And I feel like at that point, it's, like, barely even GOAT format anymore. It's like, hey, I'm playing Cyberstein. You're playing Magical Explosion. Let's see who OTKs the other person first. Like, like people complain enough about, like, OTKs and GOAT format as is. So, like, just allowing people to play, like, Stein with like Cyber End Dragon and three limiters, and like allowing people to like play different Dimension Master in the Reasoning Gate deck. Like, it, it's just, it's just messy. So, I feel like if you added Cybernetic, you'd have to like either honor ban or actually ban like a lot of unfair cards. And, uh, yeah, Cyberstein does see does see much more play in modern GOAT format than 2005. Because uh, back then, I mean, really when people side Stein now, it's like mostly for like Last Warrior from Another Planet. And the decks that like Last Warrior from Another Planet counters like didn't really exist back then. No, I mean, Different Dimension Master is actually incredibly good in Reasoning Gate. And in fact, in, like, the Diamond Dude Turbo decks in, like, 2008, it was, like, a staple, and it was extremely good. Like, Different Dimension Master is basically just, like, a better Air Knight. And again, you can also add, like, Magical Explosion to your Reasoning Gate deck, if you wanted to. I'm, I don't even know if it would be good, necessarily. <laughs> But yeah, if you like allowed Cybernetic Revolution, I think you would have to like, you'd probably have to like ban or limit limiter removal at a minimum, because having like three Cyber Dragons, three Cyber Steins, like Jinzo and three Dakochi with like three limiter, is just like a bunch of nonsense. Like, even when, like, Chris Perovic was, uh, was doing, like, the New Geo thing, and he was testing New Geo, he was like, okay, I think I'm gonna, like, allow people to play two Cyber Dragons and two Limiter Removals. And then I just, like, killed him with Limiter Removal a thousand times, and he's like, okay, we're not, <laughs> we're not, we're not doing this. <laughs> Alan's beating me too much by going, like, Cyber Dragon Dakochi limiter attack for game, you know, like it's it's just this just isn't my cup of tea. Yeah, I mean some cheese is fine. Like multiple limiter is a very like it's very annoying to play around because like say you're at eight thousand, right? Say you're less. Say you're like 7,000. Say you like duoed your opponent, right? And I don't know. Say you like duo your opponent and set like Book of Moon and pass. And your opponent goes summon Mechanical Chaser attack directly. Now you probably don't want to like Book of Moon it because like Book of Moon's a minus one. But if you don't Book of Moon, your opponent can just go damage step limit or limit or kill you. Right? 
and that's true in like you know regular goat format as well the difference is is that the trade-off is if you want to play a bunch of limiters you have to play a bunch of shitty cards like mechanical chaser right or x head cannon or whatever right because like the only um the only like good machines like good standalone machines in goat format are like Dakochi, Jinzo, and like some fusion monsters Whereas, like, if, like, everyone's playing a bunch of Cyber Dragons, the problem is, is, like, it would be one thing if you knew that every single person who had Cyber Dragon in their deck had a bunch of limiters, because then you could try and play around it. But the problem is that, like, every deck would have Cyber Dragon in it, so if your opponent, like, attacks you directly with a Cyber Dragon, then you have no idea if they're even playing limiter in their deck. So it's like, you're just guessing, right? Yeah, you could put limiter to one. That was kind of the point that I started off making. And yeah, and from like my new Gio games against Chris, like, it's not that hard to just like, because all you have to do, the thing that like, you know, the, the thing that people don't realize about limiter is like, Okay, maybe, like, most of the time they're gonna, like, have some sort of, like, fields to block it. Like, if they have a monster and a spell or trap, okay, it's gonna be hard to limit them for game. But all they have to do is wait for the one turn, right? The one turn where they let their guard down, and it's just, oh, double limiter, you're dead. Or even, remember, ring is in goat format too, right? So, up oh, limiter, ring, you're dead, right? Or if you're, like, teching one Stein, up oh, Stein, Cyber and Dragon, limiter, you're dead, right? So, so yeah, my, my point is, is, like, I don't know, like, Cybernetic Revolution just, like, introduces, like, a lot of cards that just make the format really lame. Even if there was no, like, limiter, like, I don't like Cyber Dragon, and not because I think Cyber Dragon is, like, too good in GOAT format, but again, kind of like Xerian Universe... Cyber Dragon is just like this free light monster that everyone gets to play and doesn't have to think about like, oh, here's how I, here are the exact like monsters that I'm going to play, like construct my chaos deck. It's just, oh, I want to play a chaos deck. Three Cyber Dragons, three Xarians. Like you've like already got like three copies of the best two monsters in the format. So like, even though people complain about the chaos meta now, I at least think it's somewhat interesting Whereas if you just let people run around with, like, Xarians and Cyber Dragons, like, oh man, if you think you hate Chaos now, just imagine how much you're going to hate it when people have three Cyber Dragons and three Xarians and all their Chaos decks. It's it's just, like, it's, it's not the same. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, th I think, like, like, Chaos, like, 2006 Chaos format, I think, like, towards the end of the format... It was kind of interesting because they printed cards like Banisher of Radiance that allowed you to, like, sort of go anti-meta. Uh, but yeah, like, having a bunch of, like, Chaos Return mirrors where you're just like, oh, Cyber Dragon, Zaborg, Return, Kill You, whatever. Like, that's not particularly fun. Yeah, I mean, I think Skull Angle would be fine in GOAT format, but, you know, we can't open the can of worms of just adding every card that we feel like should be in the format, you know? But yeah, I mean, we're getting we're getting kind of off track here, right? I mean, what I think about Skalangle or Cybernetic Revolution or whatever isn't really that relevant, right? It doesn't matter. What matters is this simulator and is it good or not and how it can be improved. I don't know where I should put this where it doesn't block the simulator. I don't know. So, Dan, I'm just just make sure we're on the same page. What you mean by reason geek button is you want a script that basically mills cards from my deck until I hit a monster and then stops. Is that right? Yeah, I could do that. It wouldn't be like the easiest thing to do, but but I could do it. 
Because, I mean, you don't see this right now, but, like, a lot of cards are going to have scripts. Uh, Lou, people already asked this. This is chat. This is chat. Yeah, yeah. Um. So final uh, coins, dice, counters, that's all going to be somewhere here. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. But it's going to be over here somehow on this right panel. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to try to, like, not, again, like, because there's some confusion about this. Not every card is going to have a script. Um, it's going to be, like, a smart manual simulator in the sense that it's going to be manual, but it's also going to have, like, some scripts in it. Kind of like how Dueling Book has the, uh, like, the Pot of Desires script that, like, automatically banishes 10. It's going to be like that, but instead of, like, only Pot of Desires have a script, like, the most common GOAT format cards will have a script. So, like, for example... When you, like, activate Reinforcement of the Army, there'll be a script that just filters your deck for every warrior. You know, I mean, I think that's a nice quality of life improvement. Some people act like, oh, who gives a shit? But, like, I think if you have a lot of cards like that, it it kind of, it's, it's sort of like the little things that add up, right? Yeah, same for Tomato, same for Angel, same for Thunder Dragon, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Dueling Book might have, like, a couple other random scripts, but I think they mainly just have, like, Potted Desires. That's, like, the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna do it for all the search cards. I don't really think it's an unfair advantage. It just makes something happen slightly faster. But yeah, I mean, the, the idea is, you know, the most common cards will have a script associated with them. Scapegoat is another easy example, right? To In my opinion, especially because, like, dueling book lags, but even if it didn't lag, uh... Having to click, like, summon token, summon token, summon token, summon token is annoying. I would rather just have a button that says summon four tokens. Uh... Nico, I... I mean, at a minimum, you'll be able to open up another window and look at your deck list by just going to, like, the deck constructor while you're in a game if you want to. And, yeah, do you know, it, there's just going to be a random card button. They're just going to say button that says discard random card. And then, I don't know, so, another thing people act like they, in the past they've acted like they didn't really care about, but I think is important, is also being able to automatically check your deck for, like, flips after you hit one with crossout. I think that's useful, too. Where I can just show my opponent, like, hey, I really don't have any more Magician of Faith in my deck. See? The game says so. Well, Dan, I'm glad you think that uh, so many things would be pog. Uh, but yeah, again, this is convenience is like number one priority. Like a lot of these things we're mentioning take, you know, it would take maybe like, I don't know, an hour to program, but it would collectively save the community like, you know, tons of time. Uh, Dan, answer that question is probably longer than you think. Keep in mind, I have a I have an actual job. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Like, I don't want to tell people that it's gonna be ready in a month, 
and then like have it be ready in six months i would rather like tell people it's going to be ready in a year and then have it be ready in six months right i'd rather people be pleasantly surprised than be eternally disappointed Uh, life point calculations could be automatic. Maybe. I don't know. It's, it's possible. Convulsion in nature will just have a script that flips deck. Same way it is on Dueling Book. Uh, co coin flip's gonna be added, Jason. Again, this, this isn't like 100% done. Uh, so Alex, I don't know if you just got here, but we've been talking about this most of the day. Um... The cards, uh, the the look of the cards, they'll be it'll, it's gonna be redesigned slightly, and there will be different looks that you can choose from. I think that's that's the best way to go about this. But yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if this is already, but yeah, so my top priority is actually going to be redesign the look of the cards. That's priority number one. And then after that, like, it's going to be, like, kind of infrastructure stuff, like, back-end infrastructure. Um, like, making sure that the user authentic authentication works. Um, you know, doing DB admin stuff. Because I'm not really, like, a database guy, so I kind of have to, like, learn a little... Make sure that I understand how to run a database efficiently. Um, because, cause yeah, I mean, the database is like one of the most important things regarding to like what makes the tool efficient. So I'm going to have to spend a lot of time making sure that I get that right. I don't know if it's just me, by the way. I don't know. Extra deck versus fusion deck. I think p different people have different preferences. I can change it to fusion deck, but I don't think it matters that much. But I, I was going to say, I don't know if it's just me, but... Do the cards with white text like look infinitely better than the cards with black text for the names? Like, in my opinion, the name on Necker Valley looks way better than the name on Shining Angel. And, like, I can't... I don't know why. I don't know. I just, wanna, I just want you guys to confirm that I'm not crazy. Like, side by side. Which name looks better? Okay, well, Jason, again, if, if any of you, you know, if, if any of you, uh, has some suggestions, you know, for, oh, you should hit up this person or whatever, would be happy to do that. Okay, we have one person who says black looks better, but the majority of people seem to think white looks better. Yeah, I can I can add the glow slash shadow or whatever to to the uh, the text. Yeah, it's weird because it's like the font is the same. Like I know because like it's it's my code, so I know that the font's the same. But yet it looks different. It's very bizarre. Ah, I think there's one person who was like, oh, it looks okay, or something. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think this font is actually pretty similar to Helvetica. It's sort of like Google's version of Helvetica.
but yeah, it's 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 weird because like the 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 font on an actual Yu-Gi-Oh card is very unique. I actually have one here. And it's interesting because, like, you know, Dan and I were talking before about how, like, serif fonts are garbage, and yet Yu-Gi-Oh cards, are they do have a serif font. So it's like if we want the font to look exactly like a Yu-Gi-Oh card, it's going to be serif, and yet, like, you know, no, like, UI designer is using serif fonts. So it's, like, not necessarily clear to me what the best, uh, like, font face would be. Uh, Lou, I, I agree. Centering card names might be better. Uh, is there a way to resume the game if the player gets DC'd? Yes. See, I don't know. To me, the reason why I like the idea of centering card names is because the attack and defense is centered. So to me, like, on this Shining Age, it looks weird to have the name not centered, but then to have the attack and defense centered. That's that's just me. Like, to me, like, all either, like, everything on the card should be centered, or, like, nothing should be. It feels very weird to have something centered but not other things. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We could do it that way. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think either, like, either both of these should be centered, or it should be left and right. But then again, if we go with the anime look, we're not gonna have names at all. Cause, like, let, let me see what uh. Because I found before some Yu-Gi-Oh! anime card. So I guess this is kind of what they look like. So, like, what do you guys think about this look? If I made my cards look like this. One, is it an improvement over the way that my cards are now? I mean, I already know the answer to that. Yes. Two, is it an improvement to the way the Dueling Books cards are? Well, yeah, I mean, sure, it's not going to be this shiny. It's kind of... Kind of getting caught up on, you know, stuff that we can change. But, you know, basic layout here. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think most of the players won't need the card's name on the card. But I don't necessarily think that's true for all. Me, personally, I like having names on cards, but in a way, like, I mean, not having names on cards is actually, like, easier for me to code. Because then I don't have to worry about, like, oh, here's how the font should look, here's how the glow should be, whatever. It's just, oh, screw it. We're just getting rid of that. So, wonder, again, I think you're, you're, you're a little late to stream. For me, it's like... To answer your question, yes. Most people playing GOATS will be able to recognize the cards by sight, but I want the game to be approachable for someone who has very little experience even playing, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! at all. So, like, to someone who's never played Yu-Gi-Oh! before, being like, wait, all of these cards are referencing card names, and yet I don't know what the card's name is, I think can be confusing. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, it can be bad for spectators also. So I feel like even if this is the default setting, right? Say the default is cards look like this. There definitely at least needs to be some sort of optional setting to display the card's name somewhere. Maybe it's sort of at the top, right? Like, you know, at the top here, it sort of says, you know, blue eyes, white dragon, whatever. But yeah, I think, um, you know, I think, you know, again, at a minimum, there at least needs to be an optional way to show, hey, here's what the card's name is. Now, obviously, they'll be able to see it. They'll always be able to see it by just hovering over the card, and then, you know, hey, you can see over here the card's name is Shining Angel. But that's not necessarily, like, super intuitive to everyone. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, how do cards look on Hearthstone? I'd be curious to see. Because I know someone mentioned, like, hey, we should just, like, borrow the way that, like, Hearthstone's cards look. Yeah, so when it's on the board, blows up when you hover. I mean, Hearthstone has great Everything about the way Hearthstone looks is good. That's like... To all the people that say, like, oh, looks are the main thing that matters, Hearthstone is, like, a testament to that. Because looks are, like, about the only thing that Hearthstone has going for it, and yet it's the most popular online card game. Yeah, I mean, it obscures it to some extent. I mean, it depends. Like, with BLS, it obscures it more because there's more text. With Shining Angels, it's not as big of a deal because it's less text. Also, like, I don't know, it's just me, but, like, if I'm, if I'm reading a card, I don't need to see its art. Like, if this Shining Angel art was just, like, you know, a black background. That would functionally be good enough, but it would look awful. You know what I mean? So it's like, having Shining Angel's art, like, it's not really there to serve a purpose, it's just kind of there to look good. Like, the art isn't what's important. I don't know, maybe I explained that poorly. I also, I don't know, I also just, I like the look of semi-transparent backgrounds in general. Like, let me change something real quick. So I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Uh... See, I think if we change this to one... Oh no, that that was the wrong thing. Oh yeah, hold on. Give me give me a sec. Here we go. I'm just gonna show you like how much worse this looks, in my opinion. Now like with a black background, in my opinion it looks way worse. I mean do you guys agree? So it's like either, yeah, exactly. So to me, I like the look of having the sort of semi-transparent background behind, you know, in front of the card's art. 
Well, I know that I didn't need to ask. I just felt like I kind of needed to show some people to prove a point. Now, we can mess with the transparency, like, because we can make it different values. Like, right now, it's, you know, at 85%. Like, we could change this to, like, 0. 0.5. And I think this will look worse. Why is this not recompiling? Yeah, okay, there we go. So now you'll see I changed the transparency. And now it's like you can barely see it. Right? So, I did give this stuff some thought. I think the value that I had, you know, 0. 0.85, I think is the best looking value. Like, I know some of you guys think that I'm just some sort of, you know, person who doesn't know anything about, like, UI design. But, uh... But I do know a thing or two. I'm not, I'm not an expert, but I know a thing or two. And Lou, the reason why you can't see everyone's comments is some people are on Twitch, some people are on YouTube. So that's why not everyone can see people's comments. Which is why, you know, when I when I stream sort of in the normal view, right, I I, I sort of have this uh this chat here so that people who are watching can see other people's comments. But since I switched to this view so that you can sort of better see the game. Now now you can't see people's comments. But yeah, I mean I think I think we covered everything. I think we covered everything. I think we I think we like beat this horse to death at this point regarding the look of the cards. I, I mean I'm glad that, you know, some people at least think that like this part looks fine. Cause I actually I truly do think this looks fine. Like, could the cards be designed to look better? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm in agreement with that. How precisely we should make them look better? I think, you know, there's some debate to be had there. But they definitely could look better, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a universal agreement at the, the top left. But I think it looks fine, personally. Maybe I should add a little more padding to some of these things. But this is just like, you know, changing things a pixel or two. Oh, th thanks, Lou. I'm uh, I'm trying my best. Trying my best. Trying my best. And it's, it's, it's not like, it's not super hard to be honest, but like it is tedious. Um... I mean, I plan for sideboarding to work like Dueling Network slash Dueling Book. Because I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I mean, I think that's just a case of if it's not broke, don't fix it. Or actually, maybe maybe we could just drag and drop for siding too. You just drag a card from your side deck into the main, drag a card from the main into the side. Rather than having to like click and swap. That's probably better, don't you think? Drag and drop instead of click and swap. Which which rhymes, but that wasn't I wasn't trying to rhyme. Cause to me it's like I think most people look at things visually, and the fact that like I have to click swap to see what it looks like, and the fact that I can't move around the cards to see what it it's it's kind of annoying. So yeah, so so now that you mention it, I mean, I haven't really gotten to, like, thinking about that yet. But now that you mention it, uh, I think I'm going to use drag and drop instead of click and swap. Um, but yeah, that's not for a while. Like, again... Yeah, I think drag and drop's just better. I don't know what it was originally. Maybe you're right, maybe originally it was drag and drop. I don't know. But on Dueling Book now, it's, it's, it's click and swap. Yeah, obviously it's going to check and make sure you have the same number of cards. Like, come on, guys. Uh, But yeah, it's like... Again, I'm going to... I'm going to work on, you know, making the cards look better. Uh, Probably going to make anime look the default and then sort of have, like, some alternate things as sort of another option. Um... 
And then after that, I, I got to sort of work on some back end stuff. Make sure that like people can log in, log out properly. Then probably after that, I'm going to work on the deck constructor. And then after that, I'm going to work on the part that actually allows one person to play another person. Because obviously right now this is a demo, I don't have an opponent. I also, one thing I noticed about the, the anime cards, is it just me or is the ratio different? Hold on. I don't know, like to me the anime cards like look a little wider than a normal Yu-Gi-Oh card. Maybe not, maybe I'm just crazy. But yeah, I'm probably going to use this as sort of my version 2 of how the cards look. Uh, Final Mythology, I don't know if like, I mean I kind of have a rough idea of what you mean. But I think I might have mentioned this today already. I've mentioned this on prior streams. One of the key features, in my opinion, this is important. This is a key feature. This is game changing. One of those game changing features is going to be you will be able to run a tournament through the simulator. You will be able to say, hey, I'm having a GOAT format tournament. It starts at 10 a.m. Anyone can sign up. They submit their deck list when they sign up. It makes the bracket. It, you know, makes sure that people can't change their deck in the middle of the tournament, right? It basically runs the tournament for you. None of this challenge shit. None of this Discord bot shit. None of this, you know, wondering if people are cheating by changing their decks mid-tournament. Don't have to worry about any of that. You'll be able to run a tournament through the simulator. Which I think that is... Yeah, I think that's game-changing. I think that's like, you know, put that on front-page news, right? Some people acted like, eh, who cares? I think that's a big deal. So, maybe that's not what you meant, Final Mythology, in terms of, like, War Duel feature. But that's probably close enough to what you mean. Because again, like this isn't this isn't hard. Like a a piece of software that just pairs people together and tells them to play each other. That's not rocket science. Like it's it's actually like very easy. Like I think sort of the hardest important feature that will, or at least what I think will be the hardest feature to implement will be replays. Like yes, there's gonna be replays, but like it's not gonna be in the first beta because like. There's a lot of things that need to happen to, like, correctly record and play back a replay. There's, like, a lot of different features that are involved. Like, having software that w will just run a tournament for you will probably be easier than, like, saving and playing back replays. Although I already have an idea of how I'm going to do replays. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think it's going to be as splitting the atom, but it is kind of complicated. Alright, so any other questions? Are you guys going to let me go to sleep? It's like 1.30 a.m. Like, I didn't mean for this stream to last this long, but like, people kept asking questions about the simulator, which is good. I mean, I'd rather people like, have a lot of feedback than just be like, uh, who cares? But yeah, I didn't intend to like, be talking about the simulator for like, fucking two hours or whatever it's been. All right, going once, going twice. All right, gonna gonna call it a stream here. Uh, yeah. Thanks for the feedback. Again, there probably won't be like a major update for a while. I don't know if I if I redesign the way the cards look, I'll probably stream that to get some feedback. But yeah, other than that, there probably won't be much for a while. <laughs> 